Southwest Conference title, led by number 37, Terry Orr, who scored four touchdowns against TCU last week. Against Tom Mickey and the Baylor Bears. Last week, Mickey kept a wild comeback against Rice, throwing a game-winning touchdown pass to Glenn Pruitt with only 52 seconds left to play. But today, it's Texas versus Baylor, next on Raycom Sports. Today's game is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. By Toyota and your local Toyota dealer. By Golf Oil, where at Golf, everything we do makes driving better for you. By Curtis Mathis, a little more expensive, but worth it. By Silver Creek, moist wintergreen tobacco. It's cut a little rougher. And by British Caledonia Airways, known worldwide for the finest in British hospitality and service. Hello again, everybody. I'm Merle Harmon, along with Coach Bud Wilkinson. And, Bud, we don't have a conference champion yet in this league. What's going on? Well, it's a very, very jumbled-up race, but if Texas can win today and then beat Texas A&M, they will be the conference champion in the Cotton Bowl. Should they lose, boy, it's anybody's guess. <laughs> it looked like Texas peaked last week at TCU. Well, they had an undefeated opponent to play, and that really helps you a lot. They've lost one game. Texas also has been bothered by nagging injuries all year. All of the people were back in shape. They put together a fine game, and Dodge really improved his passing after rather a dismal game against Houston. We know Baylor has been so close in several key conference games this year, uh, and yet has not been able to come up with a win. I know, no, no, this has disappointed Coach Grant Town. Well, when you're close and don't win, it's really much more frustrating. If you're really getting beaten badly, you know you can't do much about it, but when you're close, you think you could. They've had injuries, too, though, and Francis and Sargent are both in shape to play today. That will improve the Baylor offense. I think they'll move the ball well. Well, it's a nice day for football at Baylor Stadium in Waco, Texas. The sun is out, the bands are playing, and we'll have the Texas Longhorns against the Baylor Bears coming up next on Raycom Sports. For Dr. Tom Oakley, whose temper kicked off every time his engine ran on, Gulf prescribes the gas with guts to help stop engine run on. For David Garcia, whose diesel rabbit couldn't get hopping, the Gulf screen filters his fuel for stars quick as a bunny. For Arthur Harris, whose unlit gasoline left him cold, there's Gulf's gas with guts with extra octane for quick pickups. Well, as you can see, the weather has improved for our Saturday afternoon football games in the Southwest Conference. The sun is out. It's 41 degrees and very windy, a wind coming out of the south, and it will probably affect the passing game. There's a 30% chance of rain, but we'll take it. Believe me, we'll take it after so many Saturday afternoon ball games with rain like last week at Arkansas. The Texas Longhorns in white will be kicking off. The Longhorns have, as we mentioned, have had a great deal of difficulty winning here at Baylor in the last five meetings. They have lost four of the five, and also in that fifth ball game, went right down to the last minute before it was decided. McAdoo and Williams are deep for the kickoff, and Jeff Ward puts it into the air and way back into the end zone. It will be down to the end zone by Derek McAdoo, and that's where the Baylor offense will be coming out to the 20-yard line to take over. And that Baylor offense led today by Tom uh, Mickey. Probably Cody Carlson will be sharing a lot of time with him. The running backs is Bud Center healthy. Sargent and Francis, and that's good news for the Bears. The offensive line led by, well, John Addicts, one of the finest. Mark Bates will have a tough assignment going against Tony DeGrate today. So here is Tom Mickey, who is a junior from Angleton, Texas, a quarterback for the Baylor Bears. He has Sargent and Francis in a split backfield. And we'll go to the air on first down. It is complete at the 40-yard line to Broderick Sargent. He will be marked out of bounds somewhere around the 38. Jerry Gray, the free safety, had the coverage, a gain of 18 yards. And we can see the rollout. The strategy for Baylor today is going to be to throw a great deal on first down. Mickey gets outside, he gets pressured, then looks downfield, finds his receiver, throws on the run, hits him beautifully right on the numbers. Sargent makes a great catch along the sidelines. Horace Sage is now in. He's split wide. Bobby Joe Conrad also to the right side. And McAdoo is in there with Sargent as the split back. It's McAdoo. 
McAdoo getting almost five yards. Brought down by Tony Edwards, the middle linebacker, and June James, the weak side linebacker. And let's look at that Texas defense. Tony DeGrate, almost a surefire All-American. Blake Bronner is back. James McKinney is back from an injury. And Tony Edwards uh, anchors the linebacking core. And Edwards, earlier this week, was charged with aggravated assault on an Austin police officer. The case is pending. He is in the lineup today. And the defensive secondary led by the All-America, Jerry Gray. Pruitt and Conrad are wide to the right side, and Pruitt goes in motion. It is a second down call coming up, and Sargent will not get the first down as Tony Edwards, who leads the Texas Longhorns in tackles with 119 and help from Bill Hathcock, make the stop, and the ball is spotted on the 47-yard line where we third down and short for the Baylor Bears. And Baylor has been an I-formation team most of the year. Today they expect to play much more with split backs where they can hit quickly straight ahead, not giving the ball to an I back seven yards behind the, behind the scrimmage. That's because they fear the pursuit of the Texas defense. Now they go to the power eyes. You just saw the stats on Mr. Mickey. Fumbles the football, falls on it. Fourth down coming up for Baylor. Those are the little nagging mistakes that just drive you crazy when you're a coach. Especially when they got off to such a good start on the 18-yard pickup on the first play in the ball game and then moving the ball close to a first down and now having to kick it away. Yeah, normally their power eye can pick up two to three yards whenever they need it. Buzzy Sawyer, who's the second leading punter in the nation, or rather in the Southwest Conference, one of the leading punters in the nation, is back to punt to Rob Morshell. Kicks that ball into the wind. Morshell will field it just inside his own 10. And he is fumbling the football, and, a, well, let's see who's got it. Both teams had a real clear shot at it, and it is recovered by Texas. So we have a timeout with 13 minutes to go in the first quarter. There is no score. 51-yard kick, 10-yard return. We'll return after this. When night comes out to play. a great kick into the wind, but trying to keep the ball low, he outkicked his coverage. Morishell, you can see, dropped the ball when he was hit. It appeared that a Baylor man had an awfully good shot at it, but Texas recovers to prevent the turnover. It is first down for the Longhorns at the Texas 19-yard line. So the Longhorns break the huddle, and the quarterback is Todd Dodge, who has hit 48% of his passes this year, 10 touchdowns, has had 14 interceptions, goes to a slot to the left, and goes now to Terry Orr, the tailback who juggled the ball briefly but was down and is out to the 27-yard line where he is stopped by John Bright, a weak side linebacker with help from Thomas Everett. An eight-yard pickup on the play. Here's that Texas offense. Terry Orr playing the tailback spot. Jane, uh, Jerome Johnson at fullback and Bryant and Duhon are the wideouts. Up front, Gene Chilton anchors that offensive line. They're back to full strength. They'll run behind John Stewart, number 78, the right tackle. And it is second down and two coming up for the Longhorn. Again, the tailback or or getting the first down just across the 30. Greg Baumkamp, number 76, a senior from Houston, and Kevin Hancock, the middle linebacker, make the stop. Let's look at that Baylor defense now. The tackles are excellent, but And so are the ends, Randall and Turner, outstanding football players. They have uh, two uh, backup tackles, and they will alternate those back and forth. The linebacking core, Kevin Hancock has had a great year. In fact, he had three interceptions uh, against Rice last week. And the pressure is going to be on the two cornerbacks, Thomas and Coleman. 
Johnson has come out, and Peter Pope has come in now as the fullback, and that carry will be by Terry Orr, and he gets so oh, about to the 34. Gain of four yards on the play. It'll be second down six coming up. Ronnie Thompson, number 20, and Thomas Everett, number 27 from the secondary, make the tackle for the Baylor Bears. And the first uh, plays run by Texas are typical of the type of offense we expect them to use today. Power running, using the strength of Simmons, Johnson, their other big backs. Uh, they will throw the ball, but it will be only when they're forced to throw. We are told from the sideline that Johnson has been shaken up. Peter Pope in there at fullback now. As on a play-action fake, Todd Dodge, something went wrong there. I don't know if somebody hit his arm or Baumkamp may have hit his arm as he released the ball. It went right into the ground. William Harris, number 95, the tight end, was downfield across the way, the intended receiver. We watch it again on the replay, see if we see his arm get hit. We see him start back, set the fake. That's the throw. Looks as though he's got time, and he really just made a bad throw. I don't know. The ball seemed to stick into his hands, went into the ground, rather than moving through the air to the receiver. Somebody put stick him on that ball. Yes, they're legal, down. too. Yes. This time, a swing pass into the left flat, going to Terry Orr, coming out of the backfield. It is covered very well by Robert Waters, the roverback, the sophomore from Fort Worth Western Hills, and Anthony Colvin, the right quarterback. And now Texas will have to punt the football away, as they got nothing on that. In fact, may have lost a little ground. And Telchik will kick this one a long, long way with this wind at his back. We mentioned a moment ago that Buzzy Sawyer is the number two kicker in the Southwest Conference, one of the top kickers of the nation. John Telchik is the top kicker in the Southwest Conference with a 45.1 average. He kicked one 73 yards against Tech this year, and as Bud mentioned, he's got the wind to his back on a fourth down and seven. Drives it out of there. Not too high, however, but he, well, he did not get a good roll. It is down with the Longhorn somewhere around the 32-yard line as the man who downed the ball was Chris DeLobin. A kick of 34 yards and no return. We've got a timeout with 10.41 to go in the first quarter. No score. Back after this word from Toyota. Being number one is tough. Staying number one, even tougher. So what would you say about an import that's been number one in car sales 10 straight years? What would you say about an import that's been number one in small truck sales six years? Number one in import car model selection and unsurpassed in truck mechanical reliability. I'd say, save me one. The more you compare, the more you'll see. It's Toyota, not the other guys. <laughs> I need some last-minute gifts. You? Curtis Mathis backs everything with a four-year warranty. Everything. Then I'll take these stereos, VCRs, cameras, portables, consoles. How did you... Everything. Uh, delivery and installation are included. Oh, tonight I'll handle those details. Of course. Hey! No score, first quarter, Baylor Stadium, Waco, Texas, Pearl Herman and Bud Wilkinson with you. Baylor in possession, first down, Mickey will run the second series for Baylor and is going to the air. It is incomplete, overshooting his uh, man out there, Greg Pruitt, Tony Griffin, the quarterback, had the coverage on the play. And we can expect to see Baylor throw a great deal on first down. They believe that the Texas defense has excellent pursuit as they do. They're also big, strong, quick. They play with four down linemen, three linebackers. They protect every gap, so you have to really hit them quick to get past them. It is second down coming up for the Bears. The ball near the 33-yard line of Baylor. Douglas and Pruitt are now the wideouts for Baylor. Second down. That's Pruitt in motion. Lot goes to cover him, and the option to put back to Sargent, and Sargent out across the 45, stumbling. He's got a first down with plenty to spare, up near the 48-yard line, a gain of 15 yards, and June James, the weak side linebacker, was over there to touch him down after he went down to the turf. Nice gain, and this looks like a little bit of a new wrinkle in the Baylor offense. They're in the option play, and... Mickey did a great job of pitching the ball back. Sargent came very close to breaking that for a touchdown. He was just knocked a little bit off balance, couldn't regain his balance. Sargent from Waxahachie, 120 yards going into the ball game. Slot to the right, first down and 10. We had a Baylor lineman move, and immediately Tony DeGreat came across the line. Mark Cochran, the right tackle, is going to be guilty of illegal procedure. And those are the little things that have bothered Baylor. They're the most penalized team in the Southwest Conference this year. 
Mark Cochran, number 63, from Pasadena Sam Rayburn High School, 6'5", 275 pounds. Joe Thomas is the referee today, giving us the call. It'll be first down and 15 on the 43-yard line of the Bears. Texas held off a furious rally in the closing minutes to beat the Bears last year, 24-21 in Austin. This has been a great series. Douglas and eight are wide to the right. Sargent and McAdoo, the running back split. Great pro offense, throwing deep down the right side, intended for eights, incomplete. The coverage by Tony Griffin, the freshman from Crockett High School in Austin, Texas. And it will be second down and 15 for the Bears. And Texas plays a great deal of man-to-man -man pass defense. They've got great speed, great agility. However, when you are playing man-for-man, -man, if the running attack happens to pop, your receivers downfield will draw the man-for-man -man coverage away from the ball carrier, and you don't get quick support. Tony DeGrate checks out of the lineup now for Texas as they bring the nickel, uh, nickel defense on. Conrad and Pruitt are wide to the right, and Pruitt comes back in motion to the left side on second down 15. Mickey in trouble in throwing the ball to Sargent in that area. Chalmer Adams was coming and was putting the chase on Mickey, and Mickey finally unloaded the ball just to get rid of it. And it'll be third down and 15 for the Bears. And now this Texas defense, which is tough, is showing its mettle. I thought that he did a good job. They did a good job of picking up the pass rush. It was a blitz. However, the receivers were so well covered, Mickey had no place to throw the ball. Horace Ates brings the play in from the sideline to Tom Mickey, who has passed for 1,342 yards going into the ball game today, hitting 46% of his passes for 10 touchdowns. He's third and long, 15 yards to go. The rush is on again. Mickey fires it away. Incomplete. A flag is down. And June James, the linebacker, covering Sargent coming out of the backfield, gets the flag. James McKinney had the rush on number 87. And it's a pass interference call against Texas. And that's one that uh, you hope doesn't happen when it's third down long yardage and you've got everybody covered. June James has been an outstanding performer. There he is, number 62. He's from Kansas City, Missouri. Senior, three-year letterman. And so the ball at uh, the 43-yard line, which was just about at the line of scrimmage, and what has changed here is the down. That's a big difference, however, <laughs> between first and fourth. Fred Akers is his eighth year at Texas. Best winning percentage in the history of the Southwest Conference. Done an outstanding job for the Longhorns. Won 73 games, lost 18, tied two. First down, Baylor. Baylor 43, no score. Pruitt in motion to the left. They go to the run to Derek McAdoo, and he doesn't get very much against Tony DeGreet. The surefire All-America from Snyder, Texas, number 99. June James, the weak side linebacker, number 62, coming up to help out, help out just in case. You think this man will go very high in the pros? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> First round without any question. 6'4", 274 pounds. He had three sacks against TCU last week, 11 total for the year. He has 113 tackles. And he had 17 tackles last week at TCU. I think he's played well. Here's a penalty coming up against Baylor. Didn't have enough men on the line. That's an illegal formation costing Baylor five yards and bringing up a first down and five from the Baylor 39. Hey. 15, I beg your pardon. Men in motion uh, create a very difficult time sometimes to be sure that you have your seven men on the line of scrimmage. On the first and 15, McAdoo picks up maybe two yards. So Derek, who is the sophomore from Northwest Academy in Houston, brought down to the play by Tony DeGreat. Remember to stay tuned at halftime for the next in our series of Greatest of the Great. Today, Texas X, Tom Landry is featured. Greatest of the Great is presented by the Jefferson Pilot Corporation. Dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. UT great Tom Landry, 46 to 49. Went on to start it with the New York Giants, part of that great umbrella defensive backfield, and you know what he has done since he took over as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Under a rush. Mickey goes down. Tony DeGreat, number 99, leading the charge. It's a delayed uh, rush. Watch Mickey as he gets the snap, drops back. The line is all dropping back to protect. The great moving to the outside. The linebacker shoots the gap. The great slides off, makes the tackle. And a loss of seven. And now we're looking at a third down and about 20. <laughs> they did. In uh, four of the last five meetings here. Third down is the call. Nickel defense now for the Texas secondary. Long drop by Mickey again. He's under the rush, and down he goes at his own 25-yard line. Bill Hathcock, number 68, the senior tackle from Garland, Texas, throwing him for a loss of eight after DeGreat just threw him for a loss of seven. And you can see what a great job the Texas secondary has done thus far. Man-for-man -man coverage. Mickey had plenty of time, but no one was able to get open. Fourth down and 28 for the punting unit. Buzzy Sawyer from Waxahachie, the senior, will kick it away to Rob Marshall. And flags go down on the snap. Who's got the football? The ball obviously hit someone as the snap was going back. So we have the discussion with the officials. No score in this ball game. Seven minutes, 22 seconds to play in the first period. Apparently, uh, Texas is indicating a recovery by DeLobin. Illegal procedure against Baylor. I believe that one of their upbacks, Merle, moved across and hit the football as it was being delivered on the long snap to Sawyer. The, the, the nose guard, watch the nose guard right now. Playing over the center. Look at that. He, he batted a ball. That's something that uh, you can work on, and you've got to have awfully fast hands to be able to do it. The some centers pick the ball up just a fraction of a second before they throw it back. Obviously, Texas had scouted that, and they made it work. It's Baylor's ball still, but it's a fourth down and 33. Texas is going to come out of this thing in great field position, or should, as Sawyer drives it downfield. Good kick into the wind. It'll be fielded at about the 34-yard line by Morshell, and great coverage by the Baylor Bears coming downfield. Trey Crouch, number 54, downfield to make the tackle. A kick of 46 yards and no return. No score in the ball game. We'll be back after this word from the Jefferson Pilot Corporation. Lots of people try their luck at getting rich quick with the hopes that all their money problems will be solved instantly. At Jefferson Standard, we know the only real way to financial security is through financial planning. And our agents get extra training to help you reach your goals with insurance, mutual funds, tax shelters, and more. Because most people who try to get rich quick never get rich at all. Jefferson Standard, we give a little extra. I am the lone piper calling in the clan. I am the words of Jane Austen. I am the proud regiment of the Queen's household cavalry. I am the warmth and smiles of an island people. I am British Caledonian Airways. I am Super Executive, a special class of service for the business traveler. I will give you the comfort and service you'd expect from the airline that never forgets you have a choice. I am the best of Great Britain. I am British Caledonian Airways. Texas takes over on its own 33-yard line on the dead ball foul on the procedure call a moment ago. They have to take the penalty, and but it was a Sawyer did a marvelous job of getting that ball out of there. Here we go with the Longhorns. Todd Dodge from Port Arthur Jefferson running the attack. The tailback Terry Orr and look at Greg Baumkamp, number 76, and Kevin Hancock, number 50, coming in there to hit him from behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Little misdirection play. He started one way, tried to weave it back, but uh, Baumkamp was there before he could make his cut. It'll be second down, 11. Jerome Johnson, who was shaken up earlier, is now going back to the sideline. He came in for that last play, is out of the ball game. Kevin Nelson is now in. Second and 11 for the Longhorns, no score. Good rush by Baylor. 
and the pass away to Harris, the tight end. He is near a first down, looks a little bit short. Ray Berry, 57, the weak side linebacker. And free safety, Thomas Everett, number 27, make the tackle. A gain of 11. Carnes did an excellent job of getting rid of the ball as we take a look at it again. He goes back, sets, ready to throw. Gets rid of the ball just as Turner hits him. And you can see how close the timing was. One step quicker, Turner would have had a sack. There's the play again, and the fine, fine reception by Harris. He had to reach a long way out to get the ball. It'll be third down and very short. Dodge goes to Orr, and Orr has the first downs. He bounces up over the 45-yard line. Thomas Everett, the free safety out of Dangerfield, comes up to make the tackle. He was the defensive time, uh, defensive fine of a year ago, and looks like Orr, who is the senior from Abilene Cooper, is in trouble physically. Excuse Terry me. Orr, an outstanding day last week against TCU, scoring four times. He was ready the day he had to be at TCU, fine football team. I think he hit his shoulder as he went to the ground that time. Let's take a look at the replay again. The handoff from Dodge to Orr. Orr cuts it upfield, knowing it's short yardage. He tries to power a jump, and you can see how he kind of lit on his head as he rolled across, and I'm sure the strain was on his neck. However, I think that he's perfectly all right. And it looked like he banged his knee up, too, as uh, he did that tumble. Terry Orr had 195 yards rushing last week against TCU, 185 of those in the second half, where the Longhorns really turned it on. He scored those four touchdowns we mentioned. He caught a pass for 63 yards on one of them. Kevin Nelson is now into the backfield for the University of Texas. We have 5.36 to go in the first quarter at Baylor Stadium. There is no score. First down, Texas. Dodge coming to the near side. Almost intercepted, intended for Brent Duhon. And Anthony Coleman, the right cornerback, number six, stepped in front of him. The sophomore from Lufkin going for the intercept. And if the cornerbacks can have a good day, it will really help the Baylor defense. Dodge back. Dodge throwing for Duhon. Coleman makes a nice move. Steps in front. Bounces the ball. Can't quite hold on to it for the interception. Anthony Colvin from Lufkin, Texas. Has one interception for the year. Radio TV major. Like that. Second down from the 45-yard line of the Longhorn. No score. First quarter. Dodge gets swarmed under. Paul Mergenhagen, 79, the defensive left tackle, and a great one. A tough competitor, great against the run. Not bad on the pass rush there. He throws him back to the 37. The front four of Baylor are all good as we take a look at them here. The two tackles, the two ends. They simply overpower the Texas blockers, are able to penetrate back. All of them are in the backfield, but Mergenhagen makes the tackle. Mergenhagen, Abilene Cooper High School. Third down, 18 for the Longhorn. Bill Boy Bryant and Brent Duhon to the wideouts. Draw. Red Well. Johnson carrying and Baumkamp right there to look him in the eye with Ray Berry, 57, the weak side linebacker, coming up to help Baumkamp, number 76. And the Baylor defense toughens, bringing up fourth down and very long to the Longhorn. The wind is blowing from the right to the left of the screen. Only four more than about four and a half minutes, and the win will be in Baylor's favor. Fourth down, 16. John Telchik from Kerrville punts it and gets hit, and the flag goes down. It is Colvin on the return, and you can forget the return because Telchik got nailed by Colvin, and the flag was thrown immediately. If you hit the kicker and do not touch the ball, it's an automatic roughing the kicker penalty. Take another look at it. Telchik back. Coleman coming from the outside. And you can see he's too deep. Had he been further in front of the kicker, he would have been able to block the kick. He had penetrated fast enough, but running into him and not touching the football, roughing the kicker penalty. Oh, and a very, very big penalty because Baylor's defense had really worked hard, had thrown Texas for losses, bringing up fourth down and, and long. And now it's a situation where Texas will have a first down in Baylor territory at the 46-yard line. So that's the call, roughing the kicker. And now Baylor will bring on uh, Steve Grumbine, number 77, and Paul uh, to replace Paul Mergenhagen. And Pat Coriat comes on for bomb camp as Coach Grant Taft goes to the uh, tandem uh, 
left tackle replacement that he has. He's very strong there. In fact, they call this line the Bruise Brothers. Perry Orr is now back in in the Texas backfield on first down. Nelson gets the call, however, and he is brought down by Grumbine, number 77, and John Bright, number 46, after short yardage. And we'll pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is the Raycom Sports Network. KAMR-TV, Channel 4, Amarillo. Merle Herman and Bud Wilkinson with you at Baylor Stadium in Waco. Three minutes, 38 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score. Rob Morshell is now in the backfield offensively for Texas. So little on that last play, we'll call it second and ten. Right over the middle to Morshell, and Morshell across the 40, breaks the tackle inside the 35, running hard to the 30, first down Texas. Anthony Coleman, number six, the cornerback, gets help from the other corner, Johnny Thomas, after a gain of 15 by Rob Morshell. I think this play shows you why Morshell Shell uh, handles the kicks for Texas. Dodge drops back, sets, gets excellent protection. Simple crossing pattern to Morshell. He's wide open, however, and then he uses his great downfield running ability to break the tackles, spin, swing, turn, get started upfield again, finally brought down after the first down. So Morshell, the quarterback last year, turned to running back and kick returner this year is out of the ball game now. Nelson is in for him, gets the first goal, breaks the car, a tackle on the corner, gets down to the 25. Kevin Hancock, number 50, the middle linebacker from Texas City, and Thomas Everett, number 27, the free safety out of Dangerfield, up on the hit for the Baylor Bears. When you get someone that far in the backfield as Hancock was, then he misses the tackle. It just destroys the pattern of your defense. Nelson, the freshman from Stafford, is rushed for 368 yards going into the game today for a 4.2 average per carry. At a 58-yard haul in one of the ball games, Kevin Nelson, second and four. And Nelson again, and Nelson may have the first down. We may be looking at a flag somewhere. We'll wait and see. Kevin Hancock, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. I see no flag now. It is a first down Time for out. Texas. Timeout just to move the chains that time. But uh, Baylor has missed some tackles on the last two runs. They can't afford to miss any tackles against the strong running backs of Texas. They've got to knock them down cleanly, given the shot. No score. First quarter, Texas on the move after a roughing the punter penalty that gave them possession of the ball. 15 yards downfield, and now they're moving on the Bears. Dodge to Nelson. Nelson trying to turn the corner, and they string it out, and he can't do it. Ray Berry, the weak side linebacker, and Ronnie Thompson, the quarterback, numbers 57 and 20, with help from Irvin Randall, 49, had him uh, good movement laterally, and they just wouldn't let Nelson turn that corner, and he lost a yard. Nelson's got awfully good speed, and he's been an exceptional pass receiver for Texas, coming out of the backfield to make his receptions. Second down, 11 on the 21-yard line of Baylor, and we're down to a minute 30 to go in the first quarter and no score. Longhorns led by Todd Dodge, who going into the ball game today had completed uh, 10 touchdown passes, too short of the record for a season by Robert Brewer, and he's going to the air for Duhon incomplete, and Colvin had good coverage on him around the 10-yard line. Colvin has done a good job. He's a sophomore out of Luck uh, Lufkin, number six. Todd Dodge looking for Duhon, his high school uh, battery mate at Port Arthur Jefferson. By the way, going into this game, Dodge only needs, needed 63 yards of passing to break the Robert Brewer season mark of 1,415 yards, which Brewer set in 1982. So it could be a record day for Dodge. This is what he has done. He has 25 of those yards right now. Third down, 11. under a chase, fires away to the end zone, it is incomplete. Harris, who was the motion man, was covered by number 27, Thomas Everett, down to the end zone. Turner had the rush on. It'll be fourth down and 11. It looked as though we might have some collision, but you can see the men both trip each other up. Not any one man responsible for it. Harris trying to break back to the inside. No Pass penalty called. So now Ward will try the field goal attempt from the 28, a 38 yard effort. He's got plenty of distance and he is also accurate. So Ward 
kicks the field goal. He is now 12 out of 15 for the year. And Texas leads 3 to nothing with a minute 6 to go in the first quarter. You've got the spirit. You keep on coming through. Your pride is strong. You won't just make it do. With every job, you leave a little bit of you. We started with an idea, a promise, a commitment to American farming and trucking. We've been building for over 150 years, and now we're honoring it in more ways than ever before. International Harvester. The commitment is forever. nothing Texas with a minute six to go in the first quarter. Texas taking advantage of that roughing the kicker penalty and marching right on down for the touchdown. That's the last thing in the world that Baylor needed to give Texas anything. They've had two penalties thus far in this game. Of course, that one was a big one. That makes 86 for the season. The most in the Southwest Conference, and it's not a good thing to lead the conference in penalties. Texas kept the ball six minutes, eight seconds in the drive. McAdoo and Williams are back deep for Jeff Ward's kickoff. Ball going way back and rolling out of the end zone. McAdoo letting it roll out. It'll be Baylor's ball first down on the 20. And he was hoping, of course, that it would go beyond the end line and come back out to the 30. So Baylor takes over. John Emergency Ward, they call him. An emergency, you call on him. And boy, as he responded throughout his career for the Longhorns. Number 23. Tom Mickey now takes over the Baylor offense. And so far, we have not seen Cody Carlson. Uh, Coach Grant Teff said that uh, he was going to alternate the quarterbacks today, but he thought that he would give Mickey three or four series before putting Carlson in. I expect we'll see Carlson before long if he stays with his pregame plan. John Addicts comes up over the ball as Mickey puts the offense in motion for Baylor. Out of the split backfield, they go to the run with Derek McAdoo on a dive straight ahead. Out to about the 23 where Ralph Darnell, who is now playing the right tackle spot, number 94, makes the hit with help from Tony Edwards, number 63. They're running more split of a a more split backfield offense today. Uh, trying to, to get to the line of scrimmage quicker than they can do from the eye formation, particularly when they give the ball to the deep tailback in the eye. They hope that they can begin to block the Texas down lineman, find a little gap, maybe pop through cleanly and quickly. Bobby Joe Conrad and Horace Ates are the wideouts to the right side. And Ates goes in motion. Mickey on the option to McAdoo. McAdoo brought down at about the 27 from the secondary. John Hagee, the cornerback, number 17, the freshman from San Angelo, makes the tackle. James McKinney, 87, forcing the play. He's the defensive end. It's the second time that uh, they have run the option play. Both times the quarterback has pitched, and both times they've been able to turn the corner nicely. And we're just about out of time in the first quarter, and we are out of time. The first quarter has come to an end. The Texas Longhorns on the 38-yard field goal by John Ward lead the Baylor Bears 3 to nothing, and we'll be back with the start of the second quarter after this message and a word from your local station. From Baylor Stadium, this is the Raycom Sports Network. Radcliffe Supply is stocked and ready to help you prepare for the rough weather ahead. Start with a pair of Tingley brand overshoes, boots, or cowboy boot overshoes. They're comfortable, yet rugged enough to withstand the harsh panhandle weather conditions. As the temperature drops, you'll stay warm and protected with insulated coveralls from Radcliffe's large selection. These durable machine washable coveralls are priced at only $29.95 a pair and would make an excellent Christmas gift. Get your winter wardrobe in shape now at Radcliffe Supply, 700 East 10th. 
Tri-State Furniture Concepts invites you to their 1984 clearance sale. Hundreds of items have been orange tagged with special prices for immediate sale. Truckloads of new merchandise are on the way, so every area of the store is loaded with the best prices of the year. The finest quality contemporary furnishings in the Tri-State area are right here. So come in while the selection is at its best. The 1984 clearance sale from your contemporary specialist. Quality contemporary Tri-State Furniture Concepts. 3218 Hobbs. The temperature in the 40s here today, and that brings out the Bear Muffs here in Waco, Texas. Jeff Ward's field goal, 3 to nothing, Texas. We start the second quarter with Baylor in possession. Flags fly all over the place, and a lot of fingers are being pointed <laughs> to each side. And that movement comes usually into the offense, but we'll get the call. And it is against the offense, and the Bears... Once again, are penalized, and Terry Orr is getting an ice pack on the left knee. Orr with that outstanding day against TCU, the four touchdowns, the, the 195 yards rushing. Orr was really coming on. Orr's four touchdowns, by the way. Uh, uh, there are six other Longhorns, or five of the Longhorns. He's now the sixth to score four touchdowns. Bobby Lane, Jim Bertelson, Steve Worcester, Earl Campbell did it twice, and Jan Jones. Third down. Mickey coming along with a win to his back too long. Horace H. was really well covered by Tony Tillman, number 11, the right cornerback. And once again, the procedure penalty stopped Baylor. It looked like they were going to make the first down. They had third down, two before they got the procedure call. And so penalties continue to plague the Baylor Bears. And the punting unit comes on. Buzzy Sawyer, outstanding kicker with a 44.2 average for the season. Back to punt for the Bears. Rob Morshell is deep for the University of Texas. Look at this, Boomer. Wow. Morshell at his own 16. And he is out across the 20 to about the 23. A re kick of 58 yards and a return of five. The wind's not that strong. He's just got a great leg. So the ball goes to Texas, and coming this January, Raycom and the Southwest Conference will present some of the best college basketball, the games of the Southwest Conference. We hope you'll join us beginning January 2nd for a lineup of the top games, including top 20-ranked SMU in Arkansas, coming this winter on most of these Raycom Southwest Conference stations. Edwin Simmons is now in as the tailback, and Ronnie Robinson is the fullback for Texas. Robinson, the up back to about the 30. Ronnie Thompson, number 20. Kevin Hancock, number 50. Make the stop for Baylor. I think everybody was expecting Simmons to get the ball, and Baylor did not think so. However, the handoff to the fullback was a surprise. Second down eight from near the 30-yard line in Texas territory. Key series for Baylor. If they could stop Texas here, they begin to get some confidence in their ability to control the Longhorn offense. Todd Dodge, 1,353 yards in the air going into the game today. Hands off to Simmons. Oh, is he popped? There's a fumble. Baylor recovers. Unless the ball was play was ruled dead. I can't believe he called that uh, ball dead. We'll take a look at it. I hope that uh, he is hit. Watch the replay. The toss comes back. Handed off to Simmons, and he's hit. Whop! Just very, very solidly by Turner. He spins. The ball is down and out of his hands before he comes close to hitting the ground. Bad, bad break for Baylor. A great defensive play. Take a look at it again, and you can see the ball out now, and he's not even close to being on the ground. Not at all. Third down coming up, 12 yards to go. So this break will go to Texas, but look at Baumkamp hit Ronnie Robinson, the fullback, and the Baylor defense is really charged up now, throwing the ball carrier for another couple of yards lost. Greg Baumkamp, the senior from Houston Spring High School. It's fourth down, coming up for the Baylor Bears. Boy, what a play by Baumkamp. Turner had a great one in the previous play. They come on with a big rush this time, Earl. They got everybody up. Telchuk flagged down. Telchuk drives the ball downfield into the wind, going to the far side and out of bounds. Well, let's see what the flag's about. The ball going out of bounds at about the 42, only a 32-yard kick. He was trying to keep it low into the wind as we see the officials discussing the penalty. 
Illegal procedure against uh, Texas. Well, that's pretty good field position at the 42. They are not, are not about to refuse that penalty, I don't believe. So here comes the call. Baylor will take the ball at the 42-yard line. And Fred Akers sends the defense to the field. There's a timeout with 12.57 to go in the first half. Texas leading 3 to nothing. For Tom Casey, whose gasoline chickened out every time he tried to pass. Now, as always, there's the gas with guts with its extra octane to help you accelerate, climb, and pass without laying an egg. For Morton Mitchell, who demands the right gas, but at the right price, Gulf self-service makes more sense for less sense. Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. The thrills and excitement of college basketball are coming your way this winter. As Raycom Sports presents the games of the Southwest Conference. The schedule features the best matchups and some of the most exciting players in the nation, with three teams among the nation's top 20. It's all the pageantry and last second heroics that make college basketball a thrill of minute. Join us for Southwest Conference basketball on Raycom Sports. Gary Ward, number 80, is coming to tight end for Baylor, but the big change here, Cody Carlson is on the field for the first time in quarterback today, first down on his own 42, and he goes to Derek McAdoo, his tailback, who gets across the 45, dropped on the 46-yard line. Cody Carlson, the sophomore from San Antonio Churchill High School, has passed for 300, uh, 589 yards coming into the game today, but he has not seen as much action, obviously, as he did a year ago when he alternated with Mickey as they were uh, almost alternating on plays sometimes. Carlson has had a groin injury, so that's one of the reasons that he has not seen that much action this year. Second down. Fumbles the football and falls on it. And Baylor continues to stop themselves. Texas has a fine defense, but uh, the Baylor offense is not quite getting on track. Uh, Carlson is new in the game. We can take a look at it here. As he turns, spins, you can see his hands come out before the center put the ball in his hands. He was never able to get the ball cleanly, but he was able to move to it and make the recovery of the fumble. So Grant Tapp, he said, oh, my goodness. That makes you hold your head. head. <laughs> <laughs> that does make you hold your head. <laughs> He's got a headache early today. Clock running with 11.52 to go in the first half. Texas leading by three to nothing. It'll be third down and ten, so they lost the yardage they picked up on the first play. Pavelic, Darnell, and Moore are now in, and we have a timeout uh, called by Baylor as Texas switches the defensive personnel, and Cody Carlson comes to the sideline. I think they're trying to get a little more poise, a little more cohesion. They have been just uh, a little bit uh, off balance. Their timing has not been good offensively. They've made a few very good plays, particularly the options, but uh, they'd like to get more poise, more balance, more control. Let's check scores over the ball games today. Maryland and Virginia, Virginia leading in that ball game. Virginia is headed for the Peach Bowl, first bowl game in 79 years for Virginia. It's quite a while. Do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Mississippi over Mississippi State, and I guess we call that a traditional rivalry. It's one of the oldest and one of the best. There's another one. And Penn State trying to retain their domination over Pittsburgh. Penn State has turned down the bowl game in uh, Pontiac, Michigan, I believe. Fred Akers hopes that his Texas Longhorns can pick up one number eight today and number six in Southwest Conference play. Pruitt and Douglas are the wideouts now for Baylor. Flags go down and the pass completed. It is completed to Ralph Stockhammer coming out of the backfield at the 48-yard line. Tony Griffin, the right cornerback, and Tony Tillman over to help out. I don't know. Pruitt may have turned up field too soon as a motion man. And I think that that's probably what happened from where the flag was dropped on the field by the head linesman. Take a look at it again. See him in motion. You've got to run parallel to or behind the line of scrimmage, and you can see he turned up field long before the ball was snapped. And he is turning back. Uh, he does make the catch, but uh, didn't make the first down. And Texas refuses the penalty, obviously, of being fourth down now for Baylor. So fourth down, about four. And 
The punting unit is on with Buzzy Sawyer again. High snap. Kick is away. A beauty of Boomer. Marshall calling for the fair catch. And the ball goes way back into the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20, and Texas will take over after the 52-yard punch. 11-17 to play in the first half here at Baylor Stadium. Texas on the field goal, 3 to nothing. We'll be back after this word from Toyota. There's no value like Toyota value. These leading used car guides rate Toyota higher in overall percent of retained value. Higher than Chevy or Ford or Nissan. A one-year-old Toyota Corolla, for example, is valued at almost 5% more than its original sticker. A Toyota Camry, more than 10%. Impressive numbers? You know it. The more you compare, the more you'll see. It's Toyota, not the other guys. Man on the move. Driver for the Coors Light Silver Bullet Racing Team. Al Unser Jr. When you're running with the big boys, you gotta run fast. Move ahead of the pack with Coors Light. Silver Bullet. The Horns ball of the 40-yard line of Texas. Edwin Simmons, Ronnie Robinson, or the I-backs. Robinson up close. Simmons tagged at the line of scrimmage, and then stepping in there is Steve Grumbine, number 77, to put a pop on him. He gets help from Ray Berry, 57, the weak linebacker, and Ronnie Thompson, number 20. Sometimes it takes three guys to get number 33 down, the 6'4 sophomore from Hawkins, who checks in at 226 pounds. Three big, strong back. However, the stout linemen for Baylor are able to shoot the gap or have thus far get good penetration into the Texas backfield and have almost uh, broken up their ball handling. Second down. Baylor is second in rushing defense in the Southwest Conference. That's Edwin Simmons, the tailback. Play action and just a rollout by Todd Dodge. Plan play all the way. He's got the first down across the 30, out of bounds. What about the 31-yard line? And whenever you get the defense uh, keying very solidly against the running backs, the quarterback on the bootleg usually can get the corner turned, and we watch Dodge here as he pivots out, makes the fake, then breaks it back to the outside. Turner just lost the leverage. Dodge runs out of bounds after making the first down to avoid taking the shot of the tackle. And he went right into a conference with Coach Fred Akers. It was, it was almost as if Akers had said, run that ball over here, I want to talk to you. And he did. First and 10, Texas on the Longhorn, 31. This time, Ronnie Robinson, the fullback, charging hard and getting some big yardage before he can be brought to the turf by Irvin Randall, number 49, the defensive left end, and Kevin Hancock, number 50, the middle linebacker. Hancock uh, bringing down this big bull, Ronnie Robinson, the junior from Adams High School in Dallas. And Second down. Don't hit those Texas backs before they get up ahead of steam. They usually can pick up extra yardage. They're so big, so strong. Second and two. Dodge calling his play, and he calls on Simmons, his tailback, and I don't think he got it. He got belted backward uh, inside the 40. Let's see where they mark the football. And the Don Lyman of Baylor are doing a great job of handling the offensive charge. As we take a look at them here from ground level, you can see how they are able to knock the Texas lineman back, and when you knock the offensive lineman back, there's no room for the ball carrier. It'll be third down and a long one. Right now you see Grumbine, number 77 up there, Pat Coriat, number 40. They're the backup tackles, but they could be starting probably because they almost share equal time. Simmons out, Nelson in. Dodge going for the first down? I don't think so. Power eye formation. He kept it on the quarterback keeper. Keeper did not pitch the ball off, and they failed to make the first down. Urban Randall, 49, wouldn't let him make the cut. Fourth down coming up for Texas. And the punting unit is on for the Longhorns. Fine play by Urban Randall. Getting fine play from the ends and the tackles, and Hancock Berry, the linebackers, are doing a good job. Don, uh, John Telchik, the number one kicker in the Southwest Conference. Boots it away, and he's going into the wind. Tries to keep the ball down low, and Everett 
He's going to pick it up and try to bring it back somewhere. And he gets seven, eight, maybe nine, ten yards. See where they mark it. They'll mark it near the 27. Covered by Brett Hager, number 60, a linebacker. And a kick of 48 yards and a return of nine. You always hate to have a punt hit the ground. You should try to catch him in the air. This one does hit the ground. However, he's able to pick it up. And you can see the Texas men covering almost overran it. They didn't expect him to pick it up. And they were past him. He was able to turn upfield. Almost broke it. Bud and I are watching today's game on monitors supplied by Curtis Mathis, and we hope you're watching the game, too, on a Curtis Mathis. A little more expensive, but worth it. Wouldn't you agree? I know you would. We do. First and 15 for Baylor. Carlson at quarterback. McAdoo on the run. McAdoo near the 29. Tony DeGreat, number 99, the senior from Snyder. Getting help from Ty Allert, number 48, the strong side linebacker out of Houston Northbrook. And I don't think that uh, Baylor's going to be able to move the ball with a consistent running attack. They're going to have to get the pass attack going and use a little more deception like the option plays if they're going to move against this Texas defense. It'll be second down eight. So Grant Taft down three to nothing here. Seven minutes, 57 seconds left to go in the first half. Pruitt comes wide to the left side. The ends stay in tight. Cody Carlson looks this way, comes this way to Pruitt, and he overshoots him at midfield. Tony Griffin, number 16, uh, along with Jerry Gray, number two, had the coverage on Glenn Pruitt, the junior from Waxahachie. And if you're going to miss throw a pass, always throw it too long. It's when you throw it too short that they're intercepted and usually intercepted for a long run back or a touchdown. Edwin Simmons, Terry Orr, Orr has the left knee in, in ice. Baylor is one out of five on third down plays today. But Texas, they get Simmons back, uh, they get Orr in good shape. They've really had problems back there injury-wise in the backfield, as has Baylor this year. Under a rush, the inside pitch, and that's going to be plenty for a first down and more as Sargent comes out to the midfield stripe. They'll mark the ball down on the 49. A 20-yard pickup on the play at a first down. It's uh, a forward pass, but it's the old shovel pass. Quarterback drops back, and he pops it forward, and it is a forward pass. Sargent breaks behind the rush of the Texas line, is in the open, breaks it upfield, and then stumbles as he tries to avoid the tackle, but picks up a nice gain and a first down. Sargent had rushed for 120 coming into the ballgame. He's adding to that yard. He's through it now, splits wide to the right. They go to McAdoo, and McAdoo slides off his own right tackle into Texas territory near the 47, and he is stopped by Tony DeGreat, number 99. More teams are using that uh, pass that shovel pass coach even the pros are using it well it takes care of the rush so much the quarter and linemen coming through are trying to get to the quarterback so they are penetrated deep across the line of scrimmage and when you pop it forward the defensive line is always deeper than the ball and there's plenty of daylight in there second down and about seven sergeant cuts is brought down by Edwards and James, the linebackers. And the great comes in, says, you guys need some help? And they said, no. He said, I'm going to help you anyway. The last two plays are what Baylor hopes to accomplish against this defense. Quick hitting, quick handoffs, try to stand off the Texas line, pick up four or five yards, and hope you can sustain those types of games for the first downs. The great is a real challenge at the tackle spot on the left side in that Texas defense. It's third down and very short. McAdoo and Sargent are the backs, and I, yeah, I think he got it. Sargent getting the call, and we'll see. Hethcock made the tackle, number 68. First down, Baylor. Remember to stay tuned at halftime for the next in our series of Greatest to the Great. Today, it'll be Tom Landry of the Dallas Cowboys. Greatest to the Great is presented by the Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. And, of course, Tom Landry played at Texas the years 1946 through 49. I remember him very well playing against our Oklahoma teams. What kind of days he had? Very good he days. He played both ways, didn't he? Everybody played both ways in those days. First down call. How about this one? This one they've worked on all week, and it's going to be intercepted finally. It is picked up by James Loud of Texas, bringing it back up the field, and a flag is dropped way back at the line of scrimmage, however. And another flag goes down on the sideline, so we'll see what this is all about. I think that ball changed hands three times, and they worked. 
worked on that play throughout the week, and they finally pulled it back. They pulled it for 77 yards and a 79-yard touchdown play back in about 1977 against Texas. Everything was fairly well set up. But, uh, they didn't throw the ball far enough, and the interception resulted. We now have the officials coming across to tell us what the penalty flag is down on the field for. That return by Lott was for about 38 yards. Well, we got a foul against Texas. Personal foul against uh, Baylor. And should be offsetting penalties, I would assume. Wait and see where they spot the ball, however. Watch this ball handling now on this play. First, Carlson. And he pops it back, and then it's a reverse, and then the toss back again. And Carlson gets the ball after having it change hands twice, throws it way, way down the field, but under throws it. Very really good man-for-man -man coverage. The ball is bounced up in the air, and finally the interception is made as the lot catches the ball in the air after the tip. Well, this is going to take an explanation as we go back to live action here on a penalty. Roughing the passer against Texas, a dead ball foul against the defense. Now we're going to go back. But first of all, they marked off the yardage. Now they're going to go the other way. That's for the dead ball foul. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty for unnecessary roughness. But uh, great bake for Baylor. They still have the ball, and they're going to have it first down and 10. And maybe it's going to be first down and 25 for the dead ball foul. Yes, it is. And it'll be first down and 25 for the Baylor Bears. It's better than having Texas with the football, however. Definitely. <laughs> They're fairly close to field goal range. One first down, and they could make it a tie ball game, even though they can't sustain it for a touchdown. Five minutes, 40 seconds to go in the first half. Uh, Jeff Ward's 38-yard field goal gave Texas a 3 to nothing lead. Matt Clark is now in, along with uh, Pruitt as a wideout. They're in a slot right situation. Cody Carlson. Incomplete. Clark, the receiver, the coverage by James Lott. It'll be second down and 25. And Texas plays man-for-man -man pass defense about as well as any college team I've ever seen. You can see Lott, number nine, going downfield. As the receiver well covered, he looks for the ball as the receiver looks for the ball and just maintains his body position. Wasn't able to get his hands up quite quickly enough to make the interception, but had the play completely smothered. Conrad and Eats come in as the wideouts now for Baylor. Ralph Stockmer is in in the backfield for Baylor. Fred Akers and his Longhorns have a 3 to nothing lead on that field goal by Jeff Ward. Carlson straight drop pumps once, throws over the middle incomplete. Joe Barrett, the tight end, number 88. Had his hands on the football, looked like he might be trying to run before he had possession. Pavelic, number 84, applying the, uh, the pressure. I think Carlson uh, threw the ball a little hard. He was rushed just enough, and in order to get rid of it, he had a little too much power on the ball, and Barrett could not quite his, get his hands up quickly enough to make the reception cleanly. Five minutes, 27 seconds to go in the first half. Third down coming up still. 25 yards to go for Baylor. Pruitt and Conrad are the wideouts. Carlson play action under the chase by DeGrate. Gets the pass away and completes it. The sergeant coming out of the backfield. He drops the ball. And he was covered over there by June James. Uh, let's see, was the ball blown dead or just incomplete? I think it was an incompleted pass. It'll be fourth down. One thing you can be sure of, the way Texas plays that man-for-man -man pass defense, if you do catch the ball, you're going to be hit immediately. They're that close to you. They stay on them like glue. Probably yell at you and say, go ahead and catch it. I'm right here with you. <laughs> right. Fourth down and 25. Buzzy Sawyer in a punting situation for Baylor. 51-3 average on four punts. Jerry Gray is the deep back for the Longhorns. Sawyer kicks it away, and Gray will field it on his own six. And he gets out to about 13, possibly the 14. A kick of 36 yards. Timeout here at Baylor Stadium. 5-12 to go in the first half. Ward's 38-yard field goal. The only points on the board. Back after this for the Jefferson Pilot Corporation. Most adults damage their health daily. Not exercising enough, smoking, overeating, or drinking too much. Digging a hole, getting deeper and deeper into trouble. At 
Pilot Life. We're educating people to stay healthy through our health education and lifestyle planning program that can actually help you improve your health because life is too precious to spend digging your own grave. Pilot Life. We never forget that behind every policy is a person. I am Elan Donan Castle on the shores of Loch Arche. I am the proud regiment of the Queen's Household Cavalry. I am the words of Jane Austen. I am the footsteps of William Shakespeare along the River Avon. I am a tradition that has always been. I am the warmth and smiles of an island people. I am the airline that never forgets you have a choice. I am the best of Great Britain. I am British Caledonian Airways. Offense today, not very much. Not very close to what we saw yesterday with Boston College and Miami. Huh? They are two super defensive teams on the field today, both Baylor and Texas. First down, Texas. Nelson, not too much. Kevin Hancock, the middle linebacker, right there in a gap. And Greg Baumkamp, number 76. Also on the hit on Kevin Nelson, who's only 5'9 and 183 pounds. The front four are so strong. Turner, Baumkamp, Megan Hagen, Randall, and the men that play behind them that the linebackers have room to run and fill very, very quickly. That interior line averages 253 pounds per man on the defense for Baylor. And surprisingly quick. Second down, 10. Nelson coming up the middle. Gets out near the 20. Stopped at about the 19. And he'll have third down and short. Robert Waters coming up. Third down short being about three. We'll see where they mark the ball down. It is third down and three coming up. Robert Waters, number 44, the roverback on the hit. Kevin Nelson is from uh, Stafford, Texas. A freshman has scored one touchdown of the run, one to the pass this year. But he's an excellent athlete. They really like him. Duhon and Bryant are split up. Dodge audible. It is intercepted, picked up by Ray Barry. Barry is inside the 20, down to the 18. A very soft floater, no zip on that ball at all. It was easy for Barry, his third interception of the year. Kevin Nelson was the man for whom the pass was intended, and Barry, who had the coverage on him, coming out of the backfield, just stepped up there and kind of one-handed it. They've thrown a lot to Nelson coming out of the backfield with the check signals. I think that uh, Barry guessed that it was going to be thrown to him. He retreated just a little and then stayed in perfect position in front of him to come up with the interception. Great play, big turnover for Baylor. With three minutes and 48 seconds, Baylor has the ball on the 18-yard line with a first down. Sergeant and McAdoo are the backs. It goes to McAdoo. McAdoo leaps to turn the corner and loses the ball, but he was out of bounds and the play was over. But he does pick up some yardage. John Hagee, 17, and Jerry Gray, number two, the deep backs coming up with help from McKinney. The option play run again. This time it's Carlson pitching the ball. Ball is back. Ball carrier turns up the field and is hit, but beautiful defensive play. That's why it's so hard to run against this Texas team. They have such great lateral movement. They're big, strong, but also can all run. Second down, seven of the 16. McAdoo again. McAdoo makes his cut back inside and goes inside the 15, where June James, 62, the weak side linebacker, and Tony Edwards, 63, the middle linebacker, make the tackle on the 14. So they got only two on that one. And your big, big third down play coming up. Mm -hmm. And Baylor is three out of seven now in third down conversions. Tony Edwards is going out. Cody Carlson is coming to the sideline. And we've got a timeout with 2.45 left to play in the first half. Texas leading three to nothing, but Baylor is threatening. You've got the spirit. You keep on coming through. Your pride is strong. started with an idea, a promise, a commitment to American farming and trucking. We've been building for over 150 years, and now we're honoring it in more ways than ever before. International Harvester. The commitment is forever. Sir was off today, kept missing. Gotta get that racket restrung. Here's your super nachos. Maybe I should try a wide racket like yours. Fry? 
guys? Did you notice the balls were a little dead? Old timer? Right here. Elbows acting up again. It's just dampness. Boy, your returns were fast. Now, let's face it. You beat me. No excuses. Three sets. <laughs> I had a good teacher, Dad. Maybe I taught you too well. No play sales. <laughs> it's chilies. No play sales. Third down, six coming up for the Baylor Bears. And Cody Carlson is at quarterback. Carlson completes it. McAdoo at the... He's in there. Touchdown. McAdoo at the flag. Fought off Braggs. A strong safety to get in on a 14-yard pass and run play. And Baylor takes the lead. Beautiful crossing pattern. The two wide receivers were on the narrow side, wide side of the field. They were able to drive the Texas defenders back when McAdoo crossed and out and ran the coverage. He was wide open and able to turn it up for the score. Beautiful play. The second touchdown pass that McAdoo has caught this year and Grant Taff in his 13th year at Baylor closing it out today. Feels much better right now. And once again, Baylor is giving the Texas Longhorns a very tough football game as Jefferson goes for the extra point, and it is good. And with 2.40 left to play in the first half, the Baylor Bears are leading by a score of 7-3. to three. The two wide receivers are on the left side of the screen. They move down the field as we see McAdoo coming in motion here. He breaks it back to the outside. Is wide open. The man covering him just was not there. They play man-for-man -man pass defense. He's able to turn it up into the end zone before anyone else can adjust and be in on the tackle. So a very happy young man, Derek McAdoo, who's from Northwestern Academy in Houston. Got a lot of happy teammates also and a happy coaching staff. <laughs> His second touchdown reception of the year. Jim Mueller will be kicking off for Baylor. Ball teed up on the 40-yard line. The window is back and going back deep for the Texas Longhorns. Tony Tillman is back there. Mueller kicks it away. Going back into the end zone, and it will be down to the end zone. Now let's check scores over the ball games from around the country. Maryland, Virginia tied at 14 in the second quarter. The ACC championship at stake in that one. George Wells has done a great job at Virginia. And Mississippi clinging to their lead, 7-0 over State. Pittsburgh, 7-3, and that great rivalry against Penn State. Penn State uh, still not in a bowl game. Here come the Longhorns, first down at their own 20, 2.40 to go in the first half. Todd Dodge at quarterback. Kevin Hancock was up there. Somebody really hammered that ball. And Randall is the man. Hancock and Randall were both really putting the pressure on Todd Dodge. And Randall has had a great season. He's made 46 individual tackles, 28 assists for a total of 74. And he also does a great job of rushing the passer. And here he's up in the air. There's no lane for Dodge to throw the ball in as he knocks the ball away. Randall, you know they're talking about if Baylor had had a better season, Randall could probably have made several All-America teams. 6'2", 240 out of Burn High School in Mumford. Todd Dodge, that's what he has done today. Now Dodge wants a timeout. He goes up to the line of scrimmage, something doesn't look right. So Dodge will go over and talk it over with Coach Fred Akers as Texas trails 7-3 to three with 2 minutes and 34 seconds left to play in the first half. And I know, Coach Bud Wilkinson, you... Before we even got to Baylor, before we got into Waco, you were saying this is going to be a, a defensive struggle and look out for Baylor. Well, Baylor is, uh, as we mentioned uh, earlier on, been a very fine football team. They've lost, but they've lost very close games, and uh, everything was ready for them today. They may not win, but uh, they're in condition to play. They're injured players. They're most of them well now, and they're a quality club. This telecast authorized by rights granted by the Southwest Athletic Conference, University of Texas and Baylor University. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the express written permission of these parties is prohibited. The announcers for this game were approved by the Southwest Athletic Conference. 
So it's Baylor's pass against the Longhorns running game, huh? Well, as long as the uh, Baylor pass defense holds up, their running defense is going to hold up. It's the pass defense that's going to be pressured. If they can keep their pass defense intact, keep from getting burned for long ones, they'll stay in this game. Nelson is in the ball game, and he is in the slot to the left as Dodge is under a rush, gets some pretty good protection, fires away, incomplete. Duhan was in the area. I think he had his hands on the ball, but he couldn't hang on. Anthony Cole in the right quarterbacks. Number six had the coverage along with Clark Hood, the strong safety, number 15. And we're getting great pressure on Dodge by the entire Baylor line and linebackers. He couldn't see anybody open, couldn't see anybody downfield, started to run. Thought he had an open receiver, but the ball is batted away, and again, the pass defense of Baylor holds up. On third down conversions, as you look at the time, Texas is one of seven. Dodge checking signals. Third and ten is the call. Dodge looking for Nelson coming out of the backfield. Now is in a scramble act. See if he can find anybody. Dodge goes down short of a first down. Oh, he went down hard, too. <laughs> Jack Hurd made the tackle a gain of seven. It'll be fourth and three. They're banging each other around down there now. And the Baylor pass defense, which is the critical part of their defensive unit, has thus far done a good job against the Texas offense. Dodge looks a little bit wobbly as he goes to the sideline. <laughs> I'm sure he is. So John Talchuk, who has averaged 37.7 today, his season average... 45.1, but he's been kicking into the wind. He does again. That ball goes up there and kind of dies, and Everett on the fair catch calling and taking the ball at the 32. Kick of 40 yards. And we'll take a look at Dodge on the previous play. The pass defense downfield. He gets back. He doesn't get immediate pressure, but then he feels pressure coming, breaks it to the outside, keeps his balance, Looking again downfield, cuts back inside one man, and now he's going to try to run for the first down. The Baylor people close on him, give him a good solid hit. He fails to pick up the first down. So the Bears with Cody Carlson at quarterback out of Churchill High School in San Antonio. A sophomore had an outstanding year last year as a freshman, has been hurt some this year with a groin pull in action today. And now he has the ball on his own 32-yard line, a minute 42 to go in the first half. Let's see if he airs it out. Might be another one of those multiple ball handling plays. Sergeant and Stockamer, the running backs. Carlson threatens to pitch inside, then throws incomplete. He had to try to get the ball around Blake Brauner, number 85, who was uh, coming in from his right in spot. The first time they ran this little shovel pass, it picked up good yardage in the first down, but Texas is such a smart defensive team, they adjust very well. Carlson's back. He's looking now to pitch the ball forward. He sees that if I do, I'm going to pitch it to Brown or some Texas man. So I'll just delay it, see if I can't pop it out. But I'm unable to complete the pass because the timing of the play broke down. Glenn Pruitt brings the play in. He'll be in there with uh, Matt Clark, number eight, as wideouts. Cody Carlson, three out of eight, 40 yards. Had the touchdown pass to Derek McAdoo for the lead. Second and ten. Up the middle, and it is incomplete. Matt Clark. At about the 40-yard line, had his hands on the ball, but he couldn't hold it. Blake Bronner was applying the pressure, coming in from the right-in spot again for the University of Texas. Well, it appeared to me that he was open and could make the catch. Uh, could throw that time by Carlson, but he's got great velocity on the ball. It's a hard ball to handle. Third down and 10 for Baylor. A minute, 32 seconds left to play in the first half. The Bears lead it 7-3, and you see Horace Hates, number 23, bringing the play into the Bears. Bears are 4-6-0 and for the year, 3-4 and in Southwest Conference play. Texas 7-1-1, and 5-1 and in the Southwest Conference. Third and 10. Complete to Clark, but a flag is down. He's got the first down at the play holes. June James, the weak side linebacker, making the tackle. Let's see what the flag's about. Gain of almost 12 yards. Minute 25 left to go in the first half. Little discussion, we'll soon know. Carlson's been getting pretty good pass protection. The Baylor team is playing well thus far. They've dominated Texas, which is one of the country's fine football teams. Not dominate, but they are in control. Baylor gave TCU a real tumble in the first half. A little illegal procedure call against Baylor will nullify the game. And that's their fourth penalty. They 
are thick enough, and they're not going to maintain, not going to fail to maintain that most penalized team record. It'll be third and 15 for the Bears after the five-yard walk-off. Right here, you wonder, Merrill, whether we shouldn't just run a play and take more seconds off the clock than an incomplete pass would take. The chances of making the first down uh, aren't percentage-wise very high. Third and 15. Here's the penalties that Bud was alluding to. 55 yards against Baylor. And seven penalties called. That's seven plays called back. Carlson straight drop. Carlson fires to the near side. He won't have nearly enough. He completes it to uh, Broderick, and he gets about five yards out of it. Broderick Sargent. And it'll be fourth and probably ten. James Lott, number nine, the left cornerback, made the tackle for Texas. And we have a timeout called by Texas, killing the clock with a minute and two seconds. So Fred Akers will regroup his forces and see what they can do in the time remaining. They trail by a score of 7-3. to three. Texas got on the scoreboard on Jeff Ward's 38-yard field goal with a minute six left to play in the first period. Then in the second uh, quarter, in this second quarter, Derek Nelson caught a 14-yard touchdown pass from Cody Carlson, and the extra point gave Baylor a 7-3 to three lead. That's where we are with a minute two left to play in the first half. Remember to stay tuned to the end of the ball game when we'll be picking a Curtis Mathis player of the game. Curtis Mathis, a little more expensive, but worth it. We've really enjoyed bringing you Southwest Conference football on Raycom Sports and the Raycom Southwest Conference Network this year. We've had some exciting ball games, and this could be another one of those Baylor-Texas games. We mentioned earlier uh, that last year Texas had to hold off that big, big rally in the closing minutes to beat the Bears 24-21 at Austin. So in to do the punting now for the Baylor Bears is Buzzy Sawyer. And Morshell is deep for Texas. Sawyer hits a boomer. And Morshell won't even bother to go back for that one. The ball finally rolling back into the end zone. You know that ball could have come back the other way. That's only a 68-yard kick. Very close to taking a good Baylor bounce, but uh, didn't quite make it. So Sawyer puts the Longhorns in a bit of a hole. They have the ball at their own 20, 80 yards away with 53 seconds to go, but they're going into the wind. They'll continue to test the Baylor pass defense. Danny Akers is coming in at quarterback now for the Longhorns, number 12. Yes, he is the coach's son. He's a junior, attended high school at McCallum in Austin. Akers is 5'9", about 168 pounds. Johnson and Nelson are the running backs. Danny Akers firing over the middle. It is ooh, almost intercepted. Number 27, Thomas Everett up there and almost picked it up. Bill Boy Bryant was the intended receiver. Danny Akers has not seen too much action this year, as you can see. He certainly understands the game, having lived with it all of his life. My goodness. He should know that playbook. Uh, maybe helps his daddy in the summer put it together for the fall. Second down, 10 at the 20. We have 47 seconds to go in the first half. Akers throwing. This time he's got the tight end, William Harris. And Harris has the first down across the 35 to the 36, a gain of 16. Ronnie Thompson and Kevin Hancock, numbers 20 and 50, make the hit. Clock stopped as they move the markers. Harris is a perfect physical specimen to be tight end. He's 6'5", 234 pounds, can run, very agile, very flexible. And he caught an 84-yarder this year, too, William Harris from Smiley High School in Houston. 485 yards coming into this ballgame on 25 receptions. I think it's Coleman coming off the field. Baylor can ill afford to lose him. He's played a great game thus far. 38 seconds remaining in the first half. Texas with the ball, trailing 7-3. to 33,000 on hand today for this game. Akers under a rush, fires across the way, incomplete. He was going for Russell Hayes, number 14, the wideout. Turner and Randall were really pressuring Akers. Here comes Turner at 6'2 and 247. Randall at 6'2 and 240. And Danny Akers at 5'9, 168, staring him right in the chest. A little bit of a mismatch, but 
Baylor has been able to get to the Texas quarterbacks about to count before they're ready to throw the football, and that makes all the difference in the world and how well you execute your pass offense. Coleman came in. Now Coleman came out very quickly, too. Akers throwing that ball to the uh, sideline to Jerome Johnson, his fullback, out of the backfield and out of bounds in the 42-yard line, chased up by Kevin Hancock and Jackie Ball. He got six on the play, and the clock is stopped with 21 seconds to go in the first half. Very nice read that time by Akers. He started to run. Saw that he didn't have a chance of picking up hardly any yardage. Was able to deliver the ball on the run. Complete the pass. It will be third down four for the Longhorns. Danny Akers checking with his dad on the sidelines. Uh, brings in his own play. Splitting wide to the right side. His number 80, Bill Boy Bryant. Split out to the left is Duhai. <laughs> He's down the sideline across the 35 to about the 33. Hancock and Coleman stop him. Make that uh, Nelson, who took that pitch back. And with 15 seconds to go, a gain of 17 gives Texas some room. And the old flea flicker. Complete the pass. The defensive men go for it. And then when you can get the lateral off to a trailing back, usually you pick up great yardage. They've got to pick up some big yardage on this play, even for a field goal attempt, because the wind is staring the Longhorns right in the face. Whistle stopping play. We had a flag thrown uh, over on the far sideline. Indication is against Baylor. And once again, a Baylor penalty. So that takes the ball five yards, and we'll get the call. They substitute left the field on the wrong side, and you can't do that. He's trying to speed it up and go to the near side, and he need to come back to his own sideline. So a minute, or rather less than a minute, 15 seconds to go. First down and five. Danny Akers over the middle. It is complete to Harris. Harris at the 22. They tried to wrestle the ball away as Thomas Everett, 27, and Jack Hurd, 16. Tried to get that ball away from him. Now, we have nine seconds to go in the first half, and Danny Akers has moved Texas into field goal range. That little guy's done a job. He certainly has. He's been right on target. He's had good poise, and he's talking to his dad. It's the flea flicker play that... Uh, Move the ball downfield. Akers drops back. Gets good protection. Steps up. Pops the ball, and it's caught. And then pitched. And you could see the Baylor men moving toward the first receiver. Luckily, they were able to adjust against the deep receiver and make the tackle. But a big gain that puts them very close to field goal range. That was Texas' last timeout. There are only nine seconds remaining, so they've got to throw the ball around the end zone and hope to complete it. Uh, so that they can kill the clock if it's not completed and still be in position for the field goal. We have no report on Todd Dodge. You might recall that on his last series, when he left the field, we mentioned the fact that it looked like he was a little woozy. So Danny Akers has come on and has moved the Longhorns down to the 21-yard line of the Baylor Bears. Bears lead it 7-3. to three. Nine seconds to go in the first half. throwing for the sideline in the corner incomplete. Nelson coming out of the backfield was the man, and now the field goal unit will come on. Can't have a better man than Ward kicking it, even though he is kicking into the wind. So Jeff Ward from Austin Westlake is in for the field goal attempt. It looks like they're going to set that ball up at about the 28, which would make it a 38-yard effort. Robert uh, Marshall will do the holding for him. has plenty of distance, but not accuracy. And so the clock runs out, and the first half has come to an end. And the Texas Longhorns trail in this game as the Baylor Bears lead it by a score of 7-3. to three. And once again, the Bears are proving to be a very difficult opponent for the Texas Longhorns. And this is really a surprise. We watched the field goal again. Marshall putting the ball down. 
Ward has his eyes down, looks up very quickly, and then he knows, my golly, how could I have missed that after I've made so many? And he has made so many. He's been an outstanding performer for Texas. So we've reached the halftime point. And the Baylor Bears lead the Texas Longhorns by a score of 7-3, and three, and we'll be back. I am the footsteps of William Shakespeare along the River Avon. I am a once mighty castle on the shores of Loch Ness. I am a thatched cottage in an old English village. I am British Caledonian Airways. I am the first class way to London. I will serve you the finest European cuisine. You'll enjoy the luxury and comfort of a sky lounger's seat and the personal service recognized by many as the finest in the world. I am the best of Great Britain. I am British Caledonian Airways. Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. A quality diamond of a carat or more. The students on this field are preparing for a great season of excitement, camaraderie, and fun. But put just one of them behind the wheel of a car after he's been drinking, and the fun and excitement could be over before the season ever gets started. There's no place for alcohol in building an athletic career, and no place for drinking and driving at any age. Whether it's sports, music, or debate, give your all for the victory, and don't let alcohol put an end to your winning season. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. The Baylor Bears with a surprising 7-3 halftime lead over the Texas Longhorns. Remember, Texas had that wild, explosive offense against TCU last week. But the Baylor defense has been tough. Now at halftime, the University of Texas Longhorn Band takes over the field. The show band of the Southwest, directed by Glenn Richter. The featured twirler is Debbie Fritz. The drum major, Wayne Martin. And they salute the great American composers.
and entertains on the field. We'd like to take you for a visit to the campus of the Longhorn Band, the University of Texas at Austin. At the University of Texas at Austin, there is intellectual excitement and a sense of great enterprise. There is a shared conviction that what we are doing is important to the future of our society and that in this decade, Texas is the place to be. To me, when my friends here said, we want you to come to Texas, I said, uh, well, what do you have? And then I came here and visited and I found the can-do spirit. And to me, the can-do spirit is everything in science. If you don't feel that you can do something, you won't do anything. And to be a part of the bright, now diamond called the University of Texas was an allure I could not resist. Halftime, where Baylor leads Texas by a score of 7-3. to three. And we'll be back with halftime highlights and more after we pause for this word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Here at Oakwood, we sell homes we're proud of. Quality homes that you can be proud to call your own. Beautiful homes that are affordable, with reasonable financing readily available, and surprisingly low down payments, plus follow-up service after the sale. That's why we say, when you own a home from Oakwood, you can. Pride is a tradition at Oakwood. Has been for over 35 years. Come by and... The Maverick. You've got to get him back. And when you've got him, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Brewed the natural way for a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. Wilkinson with you. We're at halftime here at Baylor Stadium in Waco, Texas, and Baylor leads Texas by a score is 7-3. to three. Close it with a rush, if maybe. They hang on to it, they surely are. <laughs> in other Southwest Conference games to be played today, TCU and a big one for TCU at Texas A&M and Houston playing at Texas Tech, and of course that is a very big game for Houston. They're all big, Merle, believe me. <laughs> yeah, they really are, aren't they? Tonight, Arkansas at SMU, and Rice draws the blank this week. Coming up uh, this January, Raycom and the Southwest Conference will present some of the best of college basketball, the games of the Southwest Conference. And we hope you're going to be joining us beginning January 2nd for a lineup of the top games, including top 20 ranked SMU and Arkansas, coming this winter on most of these Raycom Southwest Conference stations. Now the Baylor Band will take over here at halftime at Baylor Stadium. The Golden Wave Band, directed by Michael Haithcock and Jerry Sousa. The featured twirler is Christy Rice. So let's watch Christa Rice and the Baylor University Golden Wave Band.
entertaining at halftime, where Baylor leads Texas by a score of 7-3, and nearby is the Baylor campus. And let's take a visit. Like the towers on its historic buildings, Baylor University is reaching ever upward in its quest to maintain and enhance quality education within a Christian environment. Education of the highest degree has been a tradition since Baylor was established in 1845. The school has grown from a small frontier college at Independence, Texas, to a major university on the banks of the Brazos River in Waco, with 10,000 students and more than 500 professors. Baylor's practice of educating tomorrow's responsible leaders and citizens is reflected in its more than 100 major areas of study in the schools of music, education, law, business, nursing, graduate study, and the College of Arts and Sciences. Baylor promises to continue upgrading its programs, facilities, and faculty to provide the best in education and personal growth for generations of students. A tradition, a practice, a promise. Baylor University. There are over one million Toyota truck owners out there. Have you ever met an unhappy one? I haven't. Not me. Never. Independent research ranks Toyota trucks unsurpassed in mechanical reliability. Better than Nissan, Chevy S10, better than Ford Ranger. No wonder 95% of all the Toyota trucks sold are still running hard. No wonder Toyota is number one. No wonder to me. The more you compare, the more you'll see. It's Toyota, not the other guys. For Ed Ryan, who was confused by all the new unleaded gasoline claims, there's Gulf Super Unleaded, now is always the gas with guts, one of the highest octane gasolines you can buy. For Morton Mitchell, who demands the right gas, but at the right price, Gulf self-service makes more sense for less sense. Gulf, everything we do. tobacco. It's cut a little buffer. Greatest of the Great is brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. No possession is more precious than life, and no business more rewarding than improving life. At Jefferson Pilot, we've spent over 75 years making lives better, richer, and more secure through our companies in insurance, broadcasting, and publishing. Jefferson Pilot, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. He is best known as the man who built the Dallas Cowboys into one of the winningest and most respected teams in pro football history. But Tom Landry, whose remarkable coaching accomplishments include two Super Bowl victories, also made a noteworthy name for himself as a player. In the late 40s, while a fullback for the University of Texas, he earned all Southwest Conference honors as a junior. And in his senior year, served as co-captain of a Longhorn team which upset Georgia in the Orange Bowl. It is that bowl victory, in fact, which remains as one of the touchstones of Landry's playing day's memories. The greatest game that I can remember in college was the Sugar Bowl, I mean the uh, Orange Bowl game my senior year. When we went down there, we had lost three games and tied one, and everybody said we were a second-rate team to play Georgia Bulldogs with their great team, and we went down and beat them 41-28 to 28 in the uh, uh, Orange Bowl, and that's the game I probably remember best of all games that we played. An all-regional fullback at Mission Texas High School, Landry was first groomed as the heir apparent to the legendary Bobby Lane's quarterback job at Texas. But an untimely injury put a quick end to the plan. Well, when I came up in, in 46, that was a sophomore year, DX5 was still coaching. We were using a single wing, but when Blair Cherry took over in 47, had Bobby Lane at quarterback, he wanted to make me a quarterback. So I became the number two quarterback and playing defense while Bobby finished his senior year. And then I think it was the second game of the year, I broke my thumb on my right hand. Yeah. And uh, they moved me into fullback. At that time, we went up against Choo Choo Justice in North Carolina. I gained about 110 yards or something at fullback, and I never got out. 
that position, mainly because my thumb got stiff and I couldn't throw the ball anymore. Though one of the Longhorns' major offensive weapons, broadcasters referred to him as Karen Tom Landry. He was also an outstanding defensive back. It was, in fact, at that position that he would go on to greater heights as a professional, earning all-pro status with the New York Giants. Later, he would serve there as an assistant coach, before accepting the challenge of molding the new franchise which had been awarded to Dallas. While the focus of his attention today, naturally, is the weekly challenge he and his team face in the NFL wars, Landry continues to follow the fortunes of his alma mater, and he fondly remembers those days spent there. I think probably the importance of college for young people are, is probably the fact that you go and you meet people that you learn, uh, you're acquainted with through all the rest of your life is probably as, as important as the education you get in college. That's what I remember most because there's people everywhere in Texas right now and across the country that I was in school with. They're all in excellent positions uh, in businesses and, and politics all the way across the country. And I think this has a, a great effect upon anyone who's had that type of association. Both as a player and a coach, Tom Landry was and is among the greatest of the great. Greatest of the Great was brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. We're at halftime. Baylor leads Texas by a score of 7-3. to three. Now let's look at the stats, bud. Well, it was very close. Uh, neither team able to run the ball well. Uh, <clears throat> Texas making 52 yards rushing, only 34 yards uh, by Baylor. The total offense, 131 yards to 98 yards. And as we look at the penalties, Baylor way out in front. The one turnover by Texas, of course, very important. And time of possession, the Longhorns lead by a slight margin. Today's Southwest Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by Gulf Oil, where at Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. By Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. By Curtis Mathis, a little more expensive, but worth it. By Michelob Light, you can have it all. By De Beers, the name that stands for diamonds. A diamond is forever. And by Chili's, no place else is Chili's. What kind of person buys a Curtis Mathis stereo? The technology is unbelievable. Well, a person who appreciates the quality and engineering of top-of-the-line audio systems. I'll pay by check every month. Or a person who wants easy monthly payments on the only stereo with a four-year warranty. We don't want to buy it. We want to rent it. Or someone who doesn't want to rent just any old stereo, but a new Curtis Mathis. Curtis Mathis stereo components. You won't believe your ears. There's a sweet Southwest spirit. This is what we call our Quicken machine. It allows you to buy a ticket in about 30 seconds. There's a certain Southwest style. Just take your credit card and run it through the machine like this. Uh, just like this. There's a certain Southwest flair. Uh, Patty, what's wrong with this machine? Card's expired, huh? Texas will kick off to open the second half. The Longhorns trail 7-3. to three. And on the sideline, you see Todd Dodge. Uh, Todd, uh, Dodge left the ball game, as we had uh, recalled, a little bit dizzy on the last possession that he was in. And Danny Akers came on to move the Longhorns downfield as that kickoff goes back into the end zone and out of the end zone. And it'll be brought out to the 20 where Baylor will take over. Uh, we are told that uh, Dodge will not play until that dizziness is gone and that uh, Terry Orr has a hyperextended knee and he probably will be back. Tom Mickey will be the quarterback for Baylor as we open the third quarter. And you have to hope that uh, Dodge uh, has not been shaken up to the point where he can't play. Shame to lose your starting quarterback in a critical game like this. 
Here come the Bears, leading by 7-3. Conrad and Pruitt are the wideouts. Tom Mickey is the quarterback. The running backs are Sargent and McAdoo. And it is Sargent right up the middle to about the 24, where Tony DeGreat, number 99, and Tony Edwards, number 63, smack him down. And the Baylor offense trying to just get contact with the front four and the linebackers and let the ball carrier try to slide through for three or four yards. They have been trying to do it and have done it all with moderate success, I would say. Will the game plans change for the second half? I don't believe so on Baylor's side. I think Texas has to throw the ball more and complete some passes if they're going to win. Second down coming up. Eights is now in as a wide out. He's the motion man. McAdoo, the tailback. Ooh, the Longhorn defense at the line of scrimmage led by James McKinney, 87, and Ty Allert, the strong side linebacker, coming up to help out on the play. And that was a very good example of well-coordinated team defense where the linemen defeat the men trying to block them and the linebackers are free and everyone moves in and you've got lots of white shirts around the ball. James McKinney, number 87, another victim this year of a toe, uh, turf toe. He missed the Houston game because of that. Sergeant and McAdoo are the split backs. Third down is the call. Six coming up. McKinney throwing the ball behind the intended receiver, Glenn Pruitt, number 25, Tony Griffin, the right cornerback, number 16, had the coverage, and the punting unit will come on for the Bears. And Pruitt had his man beat, uh, shame that the ball was not thrown a little bit more accurately, would have been first down Baylor. So the punting unit is on, and Buzzy Sawyer had an outstanding first half of kicking. He's in to do the punting for the Bears. He averaged 51.3, Merle, in the first half. Wow. He kicks this one into the wind, gets a lot of foot into the ball. It'll be Marshall to field it on his own 37. He's across the 40. A flag goes down at the 41. And a return of three yards, a 39-yard kick. Terry Crouch made the tackle for Baylor. Let's see what the flag's about. And usually it's someone with an illegal block. And again, it is a clipping penalty against Texas. So things have not gone the way, obviously, they have not gone the way that Fred Akers would like them to go. But uh, coming off of a, such an explosive game last week against TCU, I think that's been kind of the shocker, at least for the fans here today. Well, it's hard to have a team maintain momentum. I Texas Christian obviously competing for the conference championship. Texas all fired up, ready to play. Had a highly, highly successful game and haven't been able to quite build it up thus far this afternoon. Danny Akers is coming at quarterback, and he finished the first half at quarterback. His running backs will be Terry Orr, 37, and Kevin Elson, number 32. Ball at the 23-yard line of Texas. Akers goes to the up man. That's Terry Orr, who bangs his way to the 23, and Kevin Hancock, number 50, meets him head on. So Terry Orr is back at the hyperextended knee in the first half, but uh, Todd Dodge is still not ready to come back to play here in the second half. It'll be second down and eight. And again, the pressure remains on the Baylor secondary. If they can stop the Texas passing attack, I think that they'll be in reasonably good control of the running game. Todd Dodge still on the sideline, and as we mentioned earlier, will not play until that dizziness is gone. Second and eight. Danny Akers to the tailback. Nelson trying to slide to the outside, gets to the line of scrimmage. Aaron Grant wouldn't let him go. The football was fumbled and recovered by Baylor. Second crucial turnover by Texas. So Grant the hit, it looked like Turner, number 81, got the fumble recovery. See Akers. Spins out. Handoff is clean. Ball carrier has no room to run. He tries to slither to the outside. Finally does get outside. Nelson, as he goes forward, the ball bounces loose. Baylor alertly is on it, and they have another big turnover. So Tom Mickey brings the Baylor Bears to the line of scrimmage, which is now the 24. McAdoo and Sargent are the running backs. And the bad pitch is going to be covered by McAdoo. And McAdoo is trying to do something with it, mainly just hold on to the ball and save his own life. As you see white shirts all over the place for a 12-yard loss. And June James, among others, and Tony DeGreat will get credit for the tackle. Very unfortunate 
pitch by the quarterback that time. The option had been good for Baylor. The best play they had during the first half, but they mishandled it the last time. And that's where I'm sure Grant Tapp wanted to go for the jugular on that first down. Absolutely. When you've got that field position, you don't want to come up with a big loss on first down. Worst thing can happen to you. Split wide to the left side is Matt Clark. And Glenn Pruitt is in the slot as Mickey will throw and does to Pruitt. Pruitt down the sideline, first down and more. He's all the way down inside the 10, knocked out of bounds of the 9-yard line by Tony Griffin, who bumped him out. A gain of 26 yards to Glenn Pruitt, the junior from Waxahachie. And Pruitt just beat the man-for-man -man pass defense. We take a look at it again. Mickey has good protection, delivers the ball sharply. Pruitt on an out pattern. He breaks past Lott. The other man for man men covering were not able to come over quickly to support against the completed pass. They finally did knock him out of bounds, however, after a big first down. Pruitt caught the winning touchdown pass in that wild game against Rice last week. First and goal to go inside the 10. Mickey to McAdoo. McAdoo diving down inside the five to about the four, second down and goal as James Lott made the tackle. There again is that example of Baylor going to the quick hit, Coach. Yes, that's what they want to do. Try to get your helmet, your shoulder, on the men on the line of scrimmage. Just neutralize them there and then let the back find the daylight. And that time it was good for them. Not big gainers, but steady four-yard gainers. Glenn Pruitt brings the play in. Grant Taft, 13th year at Baylor. Freddie Akers, 8th year at Texas. Boy, he... You imagine how he feels right now. His number one quarterback is out of there. Second down and goal to go. Baylor leading it 7-3. Mickey to McAdoo, and McAdoo is near the one. Bill Hathcock, 68, and Blake Bronner, 85, the right tackle and right in. Stop him before he can get into the end zone. Very good blocks that time, Homer, by Camp and Porter, addicts of the offensive line of Baylor. About a yard and a half for a touchdown. Derek McAdoo, who has scored twice on the ground and once in the air this year, number 26, as you look at him in the huddle. It'll be third down and goal to go as Horace H. brings the play in from the sideline. And they need to hustle. There are only 11 seconds left in the 25-second count. Not the time to get a penalty now. Third down and goal. Mickey gets the playoff. McAdoo hit of the line of scrimmage. Dives to the goal line, and the nose of the football is almost at the goal line. James McKinney, 87, stopped him before he could slide in, and Tony DeGreat made sure that he didn't get in. Another quick handoff. This third one on this drive from close to the goal line. You can see the handoff, the drive. He's hit, slides forward, and almost gets the ball across the plane of the goal line, but wasn't quite able to do so, and now a tough choice for Grant Teff. Do I go for the field goal, or do I try to score the touchdown? He wants a timeout to talk it over. I think he just sent a third tight end into the ball game, indicating power play, but we'll see what they do when we come back. Baylor leading 7-3 to three with the ball in the Texas two-inch line. From Dr. Tom Oakman, whose temper kicked off every time his engine ran on, Gulf prescribes the gas with guts to help stop engine run on. For David Garcia, whose diesel rabbit couldn't get hopping, the Gulf screen filters his fuel for stars quick as a bunny. For Arthur Harris, whose unleaded gasoline left him cold, there's Gulf's gas with guts with extra octane for quick pickups. Gulf, everything we do. Which one? Okay. What's that? Your daddy gave it to me. What for? Our anniversary. Do you like it? Oh, I love it. It felt as if it was the most wonderful feeling. Like when I was 20 and your daddy asked me to marry him. Did he say yes? Of course. You've got the greatest daddy in the world. The diamond anniversary ring. The gift that says you'd marry her all over again. Baylor, fourth down, you see the football, the nose of the ball, almost at the goal line. And the Baylor Bears, who lead 7-3, took over the Texas fumble at the 24 to march to the two-inch line. They go to the power eye. Touchdown, Stockhammer. Ralph Stockhammer, the junior from Alma, Arkansas, scoring for Baylor. They called that one in the right hole. Beautiful blocking. Again, Porter, Addicts, Camp. So the Baylor Bears.
Bears have taken a 13-3 lead over the University of Texas Longhorns, capitalizing on mistakes. In fact, all the scoring, you alluded to this earlier, but all the scoring has now been uh, picked up after a miscue. A great offensive line surge by Baylor, however, to get the ball on three downs and then into the end zone on fourth down. And the extra point makes it 14-3. So the Bears in a surprising lead here now in the third quarter with 10.09 to play. And a lot of courage here. They go to the power eye formation. It's the quick handoff. You can see it popping through there without any trouble at all as Stockhammer is into the end zone, standing up easily. Excellent blocking again. But the center, the guards, and the tackle. You can see them wiping out the Texas defenders. Ball carrier free in the end zone and a happy, happy man. So now Baylor will kick off to the Longhorns. Jim Muller will do the kicking. Texas trailing 14 to 3 third quarter. Both these teams last week, you know, had explosive ball games. Ralph Stockhammer, the junior from Arkansas, 6'2, 218 pounds, scoring that touchdown. Last scoring drive of the 24 yards after the fumble recovery took six plays to get him in. And they were tough plays, each one of them, but the Baylor offense had some consistency. Kickoff is going to come up short, and it will be fielded and brought back downfield by Kevin Nelson, number 32, and Nelson gets it up to about the 35-yard line. Nice return of 21 yards. A short James kickoff Smith. into the wind, Merle, excuse me, but a fine return. James Smith making the tackle. Danny Akers is still quarterbacking Texas. He led the Longhorns to field goal range as the first half ended. But Jeff Ward missed one after kicking the opening uh, points of the game, a 38-yarder, way back in the first quarter. So Danny Akers, the junior from McCallum High School in Austin, and the coach of the, the son of the head coach, Fred Akers, now guides the Longhorn offense. Orr and Robinson are the backs in the I formation. The play action, Danny Akers throwing long. It is incomplete. The intended receiver, number 80, Bill Boy Bryant, and Johnny Thomas, 41, the left quarterback, had the coverage on Bill Boy. Yeah, it appeared that Bryant uh, had beaten the defender here as we see Akers back throwing the ball, moving downfield following the flight of the ball, and yes, Bryant was way behind him. However, the defender is able to turn. The ball is underthrown, and the official had a little question in his mind as he kind of put his hand on his hip, but he did not bring out the yellow flag. It'll be second down coming up for the Texas Longhorns at their own 35-yard line. They trail by 14 to 3. Danny Akers throwing. It is intercepted, picked off on the 44-yard line by Johnny Thomas. Thomas coming back to the near side, knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Texas. Bill Boyd Bryant making the tackle after an 11-yard return by Johnny Thomas, who had moved from the right corner spot to the left corner spot. The sophomore from Houston picking off the pass. And this is the perfect execution of the tip drill. You knew they were going to test the Baylor pass defense. Akers rolling out, has good protection, throws the ball downfield. It's a little bit too high. Bryant jumps for it. He can't quite stretch high enough. It goes over his head, and there's the interception. Thomas has the ball. Gets a pretty good run back here. Gets some blocking. And once again, Baylor is on the Texas side of the field. At the 45, Tom Mickey and company. McAdoo and Sargent are the back split. And a jarring tackle by James McKinney on Broderick Sargent. Ralph Darnell, 94, also helping. Not too much on that one. There's a happy bear. Well, this is a critical situation, very obviously, for the Longhorns. But Baylor put some more points on the board here, and they'll be hard to catch. That happy bear had the wrong cap on, though. And it is second down and nine coming up. Mickey pitching it back to his trailing back, his tailback, McAdoo. And Jerry Gray rolls him out of bounds. So let's see where they mark it at about the 37. Jerry Gray, the All-America from Lubbock. Could be the number one draft choice in the NFL next year. Number one. Only one other defensive back has ever been chosen as the first man picked in the draft. And that was Gary Glick from Colorado State by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this man, Jerry Gray, could be the second 
defensive back picked as the first man selected in the draft. Matt Clark splits out wide to the left on third down and four. Greg Pruitt to the right side. A little bit of a mix-up. Mickey holding on to the football and being hammered down at the 40 by Bill Hefcock and Tony DeGreed, the tackles, and Ralph Darnell, who came up to help out. One of the Texas linebackers started to rush. Uh, the Baylor line sort of lost their poise for a moment, and the center snapped the ball before he really heard the snap count, and we had a wasted play. So it is fourth down. And the punting unit comes on. Buzzy Sawyer will send Jerry Gray back to the deep spot. Sawyer has done a good job kicking into the wind today. He's won the battle so far with John Telchik and kicking into this wind that's coming out of the south. Bad snap from center. Sawyer picks it up. Now he's going to try to throw the football someplace, and it is intercepted by Jerry Gray, and a flag goes down. Flag is down. The uh, ball will be marked on the 37. You can imagine all kinds of things here with illegal receivers down field, everybody going for the punt coverage, the pass being thrown, Jerry Gray intercepting it, and of course... I think I'm, that's again that the uh, center snap was tipped. Uh, Texas had done that in the first half, and it appeared that they did it again. So, indeed, Baylor did have the ineligible receiver downfield, and you can understand that because everybody was expecting kick, and they were going for the punt coverage. And we can see the replay here. We, the Texas man batted the ball just a little bit. The pass was very, very inaccurate. It hit the fullback. Sawyer's fussing around trying to find the ball. He does throw it downfield, and I don't know that it was a very wise thing for the Texas team to intercept the pass. They'd have a little better field position if they hadn't. On that illegal uh, receiver downfield, here's Todd Dodge coming back to run the offense now for Texas. On the illegal receiver being downfield, that is a loss of down. So Texas not only got the uh, ball, but they got a penalty on top of it at five yards. Great opportunity missed by Baylor. So Todd Dodge is now at quarterback. Play action fake, rolling right, running, getting a block on the corner. And going out of bounds on the 43-yard line of Baylor. An 11-yard pickup on the play. And no contact for Dodge as he's able to get out of bounds cleanly. You know, a moment ago, that Jerry Gray came all the way from the goal line. When he saw what was happening, when the punter, Buzzy Sawyer, was having trouble, he started coming up immediately, wound up picking off the pass. So it's a first down for the Longhorns. Todd Dodge, five rushes, 21 yards now. Passing-wise, he's three out of ten for only 21 yards. 25 yards make it, one interception, and he is in there now with a the first down. Dodge goes to the tailback, Nelson. He is covered by Kevin Hancock, number 50. You saw Irvin Randall, 49, the defensive left end, up to assist on the tackle. The ball spotted on the 41-yard line. It is 14-3, Baylor over Texas. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. And before Dodge uh, was put in the game, they... The thing you usually do with a quarterback is ask him the plays. Be sure that he can remember all the plays. And uh, I don't know whether he got them all, but he got enough to convince them that, yes, I'm okay and I can get back in the game. Graded high enough to do it. Bryant and Duhon to the wideouts on second down and eight. That pass is going to be picked off again by Johnny Thomas. He did it a moment ago, and he's done it again. Brent Duhon, the intended receiver, and Thomas, who is having quite a day has come up with his second interception of the last couple of minutes. We have 7.33 to go in the third quarter. Baylor taking advantage of Texas turnovers, leading 14 to 3. You know, when I started dipping Kodiak, made my friend here real happy because it's his brand. Now it's my brand, too. It's good and moist with a special cut that packs right, and it's got a big, fresh, wintergreen flavor. But... <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Just ask my friend here. <laughs> he really got away with words, don't he? <laughs> the thrills and excitement of college basketball are coming your way this winter as Raycom Sports presents the games of the Southwest Conference. The schedule features the best matchups and some of the most exciting players in the nation with three teams among the nation's top 20. It's all the pageantry and last second heroics that make college basketball a thrill of minutes. Join us for Southwest Conference basketball on Raycom Sports. 
Johnny Thomas, two interceptions today, and big ones. Yeah, this Texas team is playing as they did against Houston. The last three possessions, they've turned the ball over, three in a row. Cody Carlson is now the quarterback for Baylor. On first down from his 25, he looks to go up to the air and gets nailed as he got that ball away. McKinney really popped him. It was intended for Glenn Pruitt. And this is the play that uh, Dodge had the ball intercepted. Thomas making the interception. Dodge dropped straight back. Wasn't rushed too much. Delivered the ball, but overthrew his receiver. Thomas makes a fine catch of the ball and his second interception of the day. Second and 10 from the Baylor 25. The Bears lead it 14 to 3. 7.26 to go in the third quarter. Dodge sends wideouts, or rather, uh, Carlson sends wideouts to each side, and he goes down before he can get the pass away. The All American candidate, Tony DeGrade, all over him. That's his 12th sack of the year. A loss of five. DeGrade keeps pressure on all of the time. He's playing opposite Bates, but he takes one gap or the other where sometimes Addicts has got to get him or Cochran got to get him, but much of the time, nobody gets him. After a loss of five, third down, 15. Glenn Pruitt brings the play in. He's number 25. Cody Carlson, the sophomore out of San Antonio, 6'3", 197 pounds. That's what he has done today for the year. He is uh, 589 going into the ball game, so he's over the 600 mark as he goes back to throw and wings it to the near side. Incomplete intended for Pruitt and good coverage by number 11, Tony Tillman, the sophomore from Porter. So it is fourth down for Baylor, and now the Bears will be kicking into the wind. And Buzzy Sawyer will again go airborne. We've got to see if they can get the snap back to Sawyer. Cody Carlson unable to pick up that first down. And Sawyer? I don't know. He might be... Well, he's been around long enough. He's kicked enough of them. He's not tentative at all. He gets that kick away. Line drives it up. Field fair catch is called for. Taken at the 45 by Michael Felt, number 47. Only a 26-yard kick. And the Longhorns have great field position here. 6.34 to go in the third quarter. Baylor ahead, 14-3. Back after this for Jefferson Pilot Corporation. Ever get the feeling that all insurance agents are the same? Hi, how are you? Good. Good. I'd, I'd like, like to take five minutes, minutes of your time to talk about insurance. insurance. I've got a little palsy. At Jefferson Standard, we don't say the same thing to everybody because we know everybody isn't the same. And we won't sell you life insurance until we know enough about your life. In fact, our agents are recognized as spending more time helping you than other agents do. Of course, of course if that, that policy doesn't, doesn't interest, interest you, you, this one, I'm sure. We... Jefferson Standard, we give a little extra. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't have pinstripes and rock and roll? Who says you can't taste life without it taking its toll? Michelob Light, oh yes you can! Michelob Light, oh yes you can! Michelob Light, super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light, oh yes you can! With four minutes or so to go in the first half, Todd Dodge was knocked uh, dizzy and did not start the second half. And we were told from the bench that he would not play until everything was cleared up. So here he is, showing a lot of courage as he hands off to Nelson. Nelson running behind John Stewart, the right tackle, brought down by Robert Waters, number 44, as he moves the ball to about the 42-yard line, where it becomes second and six after a pickup of four. And the Baylor defense stays tough against the run. Their pass defense can hold up. They'll be a very hard team to score on, but the pressure will be on the pass defense the rest of the game. But how about this? In three possessions prior to this one, in this half, Texas had the ball 41 seconds, 23 sec seconds, and 51 seconds. The three successive turnovers usually do a little something to your morale. Dodge throwing over the middle, open is Brent Duhon. Duhon the first down with plenty to spare at the 20. Johnny Thomas, who had the two interception, brings him down after a 22-yard pickup. So it's one of the few times that we've had a receiver wide open. We watch Dodge dropping back, getting excellent protection this time. Duhon on a crossing pattern. He throws it right over the middle. Duhon has defeated the defenders as he comes across, and that's the kind of pass pattern that Texas needs to continue to use and complete if they expect to get back into the game. And Jack Hurd immediately comes back into the strong safety spot for Baylor. The 
Play action, and this time it's Dodge throwing, complete to Ronnie Robinson, the fullback, and he is down near the five-yard line. Thomas Everett and Jack Hurd chased him out of bounds. Ronnie Robinson, number 49, on that pass reception for 15. And the option to pass among one of the toughest plays in football. You see Dodge rolling out. He doesn't quite get the corner turn, but Robinson gets open, and he throws a perfect ball here. Right on target. Robinson can stay inbounds, but he can't quite cut it to the end zone, but it's a big play. First down for Texas on the six. And a goal-to-go situation is the Longhorns with 5.30 to go in the third quarter. Plenty of time. They trailed 14-3. to They still haven't been able to score that touchdown. Let's see if they can now in a first and goal from the six. Harry Orr bangs to about the three. Check that. Kevin Nelson. And Greg Baumkamp, 76, with help from Paul Mergenhagen, 79, and Hancock, 50, stopping Kevin Nelson. Second and goal. And you have to feel that Texas believes we can power it from this short distance. If our line can just take off, we can neutralize the Baylor defensive lineman. Nelson, 23 yards on 10 rushes. The freshman from Stafford. Second and goal. in motion. Nelson again fighting to about the one foot line. Thomas Everett got him before he could get into the end zone and it'll be third down and goal to go. And the man in motion goes across the formation and takes just a little bit of support away from the defensive secondary. Somebody's got to cover him. The other men are sort of distracted momentarily. Bryant goes out. Jerome Johnson comes in. So they'll have three running backs. And they go power high. Third and goal. Nelson over the top. Did he make it? The referee said yes. Their head linesman, rather. And so a touchdown for the Texas Longhorns. Their first of the day. Nelson scoring from about the one-foot line, the second touchdown of the year, and that warms the hearts of the Longhorn fans as they look up at the scoreboard, now seeing Texas trailing by 14-9. to The chance to pick up another point here on the extra point try. And it was a very close touchdown. Uh, whether he got a, broke the plane, I just don't know. Referees are on the field, the linesman, they said he did. So Jeff Ward will go for the extra point. Marshall holding, and that attempt is good. So Marshall got that ball down, and Ward popped it through. It is now 14 to 10. And here's the power eye formation. You can see Nelson trying to go into the air. He's up there, but he's hit very hard. The officials say that uh, he did, or they thought that he put the ball in the end zone or broke the plane of the goal line. We take a look at it here and see again. But you call it at home. Well, it's 4.17 to go here in this third quarter as Nelson just barely gets in. If he got in. Yeah, <laughs> if he It makes did. no difference whether he did or not. The score says so. And so we have a timeout. It is 14 to 10. Baylor over the Texas Longhorns. And we'll return for more exciting Southwest Conference action right after this. There's a certain Southwest spirit. This is what we call our Quicken machine. It allows you to buy a ticket in about 30 seconds. There's a certain Southwest style. Just take your credit card and run it through the machine like this. Uh, just like this. There's a certain Southwest flair. Uh, Patty, what's wrong with this machine? Card's expired, Herb. Need some last-minute gifts? You? Curtis Mathis backs everything with a four-year warranty. Everything. Then I'll take these stereos, VCRs, cameras, portables, consoles. How do you everything. Uh, delivery and installation are included. Oh, tonight I'll handle those details. Of course. Hey! Well, the Longhorns go 46 yards on six plays, and Nelson over from the one, officially, for the touchdown. And so the Horns get on the board via the touchdown for the first time today. 14-10 Baylor. And that's the first time that they had not turned it over. Three previous possessions, Texas turned the ball over to Baylor. Jeff Ward will kick it off for the Longhorns. Derek McAdoo and Robert Williams are back deep for Baylor. 
to one. 20, 25, 30. Great return by McAdoo to about the 32. Finally pulled down by Britt Hager. A return of 31 yards. This uh, scoring play is going to be quite controversial as this game goes along and passes into history. We take another look at it. Nelson tries to get up into the air, but he's hit by the linemen and linebackers of Baylor and very close, very, very close. So now Baylor in possession at its own 32-yard line. Pruitt going to the wide side to the left. Barrett and Ward are tight ends. They're in close, and the running backs are Sargent and McAdoo. And breaking it right up the middle is Broderick Sargent, and he is close to a first down. June James, the Kansas City linebacker, number 62, and Jerry Gray, number two, the free safety, make the hit. He's just shy of a first down. And one more time, take a look at that touchdown call because it is so very, very close from the power eye. The ball to Nelson. Nelson jumping into the air, hoping, but then he's hit halfway through the jump and was the ball across the stripe. You can see the stripe there, and I don't know. I question it. Second down and a short one. McAdoo, I believe, is... Hit short of the first down by Jim Moore, number 75, and Tony DeGreat. Moore now playing the defensive left end. He's the senior from Austin Reagan High School. And we're going to get a measurement. Uh, the clock is beginning to come important regarding the wind. Uh, Texas has had the wind in this quarter, which is why the Baylor kicking game has had some trouble. So in come the sticks. Any part of the ball will do it. Texas scored first in this game back in the opening quarter, and since then, uh, Baylor took over the lead and has led the rest of the way, and they're short of the first down by a few inches. Ward kicked a 38-yard field goal with 106 to go in the first period. Then Derek McAdoo hauled in a 14-yard touchdown pass to put Baylor ahead with 240 to go in the half. They led 7-3 at halftime. Then Texas... Uh, Fumble recovered by Baylor on the Texas 24, and Ralph Stockover took it over from about the two-yard line. Baylor moved out in front 14-3, to and then Texas stormed back with Nelson going in from less than one in that controversial goal line call. And now Cody Carlson comes out of the ball game, and coming in is Tom Mickey. Carlson was looking to the sideline about, uh, what's happening here? I looked like there might have been a little confusion there. Grant Tampson again, Tom Mickey. He's got wondered, Merle, whether they made the first down or not. And we have the power eye formation. So here we go, and we'll see what happens. Stockover, first down and more. He had scored the touchdown earlier. He's across midfield, down to about the 48-yard line where Jerry Gray pulls him down after a pickup of 11. And this is the same play that Stockover scored on from the same formation. Watch the blocking of the Texas, uh, the Baylor line. They open it up beautifully for him. They pick up the linebackers. He's got nothing but daylight. He hurdles one man, gets it downfield, finally is hit by Mercer. So it's a first and 10 on the 47-yard line of Texas. Sargent and McAdoo are the split backs for Baylor. Barrett and Long are the tight end. And the man in motion is Pruitt. Straight ahead on the dive goes Broderick Sargent into Tony DeGreat. They try to move him back, and that's a little bit difficult to do. And he gets very little. They do a little better when they go to the opposite side. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Robert Williams is coming into the backfield now for Baylor, number 22. For McAdoo, McAdoo apparently is, may have injured his ankle. Second down and 10. 2.09 to go in the third period. Baylor leading 14 to 10. Checking signals. Pitch by Carlson going to Sargent, and Sargent runs into a lot of white shirts out there wide. Led by Ty Allert, number 48, the strong linebacker. Bragg, number six, the strong safety, and the always present Tony DeGreat, number 99. He covers the field from sideline to sideline. He is really amazing at 274 pounds and six foot four. You can understand why there's so many pro scouts here today, and there are a ton of them here watching this ball game today. Tony DeGreat, number 99, getting a lot of attention from very experienced eyes. Third down nine, slot to the right. Carlson throwing to the near side to Pruitt. It's almost intercepted by Tilden. Tilden, excellent coverage on the play against Pruitt, and he almost grabbed it. 
So the punting unit will come on on fourth down and nine for Baylor with a minute, 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. And you mentioned that wind again, bud. Well, I don't think this will be a hard punt for Sawyer because he's not backed up. The ball is on the Texas 47-yard line, and he should be able to get it deep into Texas territory. 45.7 average today. Drives the ball downfield, and it is taking a Baylor roll, and now rolls back up the other way for a few yards, where it's finally down to about the 17, and that's where the Longhorns will take over with a minute six to go in the third quarter and the win. That was only a 30-yard kick. Now let's check scores over the ball game. Maryland. Ooh, they're beginning to pour it on a little bit. <laughs> Mississippi hanging in there. They're pouring it on a little more also. South Carolina in trouble again today at halftime. Tennessee bouncing back against Kentucky. North Carolina won better than Duke in the second quarter. And Pittsburgh rolling against Penn State. First and ten for Todd Dodge and company. They go to the run, busting it up the middle with Ronnie Robinson. Getting it out near the 24, brought down by Thomas Everett, number 27. 58 seconds left to go in the third quarter. I thought they might try to pop that long one on that first play. Terry Orr on the sideline, injured earlier, hyperextended knee, but did come back and could come back again. And if Texas can make the running attack go, it will certainly help their pass game. Second down, about three. Again, Robinson, the up man, first down with plenty to spare across the 30 to the 32. Thomas Everett, the free safety, number 27, and Steve Mal pass 82, the weak side linebacker. On the hit, first down, clock stop, 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Baylor's secondary thinking pass, and that makes it a little easier to run. They're very, very pass conscious at the moment. The sticks have been moved, clock running. You see what Dodge has done, 5 out of 13, 62 yards. Big day last week against TCU. 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dodge will air it out to the near side. It is incomplete. Bill Boy Bryant, number 80, covered by Anthony Colvin, number 6. And the clock is stopped with 9 seconds to go in the third quarter. It'll be second down and 10, but we have a flag in the play. Let's see what it's about. Holding penalty against Texas. With nine seconds to go in the third quarter, Texas trails 14 to 10. Jerome Johnson bringing the play in from Coach Fred Akers, and that's his son Danny, number 12, who guided the Longhorns into field goal range just as the first half ended, but the field goal was missed. And then Dodge was able to shake off uh, the wooziness and come back here in the third quarter and guide Texas to a touchdown. Holding against Texas and still first down as we look at the penalties. And Texas has had the only two penalties of this half. One flipping penalty, one holding penalty. Todd Dodge has Johnson and Nelson as his running backs. He will go upstairs and throw the screen to Johnson. Johnson... Trying to find a little daylight. Flags go down as he nears a 30. It looked like he might break that one pretty good. Thomas Everett from the secondary coming up. Kevin Hancock also helping out in the tackle. And we'll see what that flag's about. And Dodge did a good job of throwing the ball over the rushing men. And we get a clipping penalty again by Texas. Their third big penalty in this half. We have no time left on the clock for the third quarter. So the penalty will be marked off from the 30-yard line. And we may have one, let's see, one more play uh, in the third quarter or not. We're having some discussion down there. The clock has run out, and they're starting to move to the other end of the field. And we'll be back with the fourth quarter of today's game after this word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Cowtown Boot Company introduces the largest selection of genuine exotic western boots in the southwest. Choose the exact style and color of genuine top quality back cut python that's just right for you. And now at the low price of just $119.95. Check the prices and selection the competition offers, then shop Cowtown Boot Company and pay only $119.95. Stop by Cowtown today. Slip on a pair of the best quality genuine python boots produced in America today for just $119.95.
They came in waves from foreign shores. The compact truck invasion. The scramble is on. The Ford Rangers from the Texas Ford dealers rose to meet them. Armed with Texas toughness, the Rangers beat them back. The best quality, low-priced, best-selling American-built compact truck. Ford Ranger. Fly one at your West Texas Ford dealer today. We have one play to go in the third quarter after that penalty, the clipping penalty, and on a quarterback draw, Todd Dodge is stopped immediately and lost a yard in the play, and it will be third down in a mile when we come back. We watch the play as Dodge drops back, sets, and you can see it's a draw all the way. It's a play that's been very effective for Texas over the years, but Baylor has practiced against it. So now we will march to the other end of the field as the fourth quarter will get underway, and it will be, well, we'll have to wait until they mark the sticks, but I'm thinking about 29 yards to go or more even as the third quarter finally comes to an end. On that clipping penalty, they, were, they uh, uh, marched the uh, penalty off, and then the officials notified uh, both teams that they still had the play before the third quarter came to an end. You saw that, and it was a quarterback draw which ended the third quarter, and now the Longhorns have the ball on a second down, way back on their own 11-yard line. And they're also going into the wind now. So the Longhorns trail in this game by 14 to 10. And here they come. Up over the ball is Gene Chilton. The quarterback is Todd Dodge. The lone setback is Jerome Johnson, and Dodge to the air. Throws it out to Johnson in the flat, and he just he's on the short side of the field. That is knocked out of bounds by Ray Berry after picking up six yards. And now it would be third down and something like 23 or so. We'll wait till they mark the ball officially. And Dodge did a good job of getting rid of the ball. He was pressured quite well that time. How well Baylor is able to pressure Dodge will be the deciding factor in whether the secondary will be able to cover the Texas receivers. It's third down coming up. Third down and 24. Dodge, seeing no men open, tries to run for what he can get, and he is short by a lot, 12 or 13 yards or short of a first down as Clark Hood, number 15, makes the tackle. He did get 11 on the play, but now the punting unit will come on, and it'll be Telchuk kicking into the win. And he looked at the passing yardage, uh, very close. Texas, however, out in front. Dodge is a very courageous young man, running with a football after having taken the lick that he did in the first half. Taking a pretty good pounding today. John Telchuk, who's averaged 45.1 to lead the Southwest Conference, drives one into the wind downfield, fair catch call for, and grabbed by Thomas Everett at the 34-yard line of Baylor. So now the Baylor Bears will take over. That was a kick of 49 yards. And this is our final football telecast on uh, Raycom Sports this year. But starting in January 2nd, as you see, Raycom will bring you Southwest Conference basketball. Starting off on January 2nd with Arkansas at Texas A&M. Then on January 5th, we have Texas A&M at Baylor and Arkansas at SMU. And a big doubleheader for you. Southwest Conference basketball starting January 2nd on Raycom Sports. Cody Carlson is the quarterback for Baylor from his own 34-yard line. First down for the Bears. Stockamer, not too much. Across the 35, 36-yard line, maybe 37. Bill Hethcock, 68. The senior from North High School in Garland making the tackle, getting a little help from Tony Tillman, number 11. They've been able to pick up fairly consistent short yardage without breaking anything very clean on those straight-ahead quick handoffs. But Baylor will have to throw the football if they're going to move it against Texas. 13-09 left to play in the game. Baylor leading Texas 14-10. That's what Carlson has done today, sharing the quarterback duties with Tom Mickey. They go to the run again, and Stockhammer plows away, and he did plow for the last two or three yards as Tony Edwards stops him at the 40-yard line. 
So the Baylor Bears right now satisfied with running the football. They will have a third down, third down and four coming up like that hat. And they're having a little bit of discussion here as to what play will we call as two men come in for Baylor Bears. So the clock runs with 12.30 left to play in the ball game and nine seconds on the play clock and they get it off in time. It is third down coming up. Two seconds, they did get it off. Cody Carlson to throw, throws to the near side. The catch for the first down by Matt Clark and he's brought down by Tony Tillman. So Clark gets it in to Texas territory, a 13-yard pickup on the play, and Clark, the former high school quarterback from Corsicana, picking up that first down on the heave from number 14, Cody Carlson. And that was a very critical first down for Baylor. Kept possession of the football, moved them closer to field goal range. First and 10 of the 47. Matt Clark, a happy young man right now. He has contributed. First and 10, Baylor. They go to the run on first down. Sargent getting to the 40, down to the 39. And June James makes the stop with Stephen Braggs helping out. And a big gain on the first down running call. And Sargent did a great job of carrying the football. He did most of that on his own. Faked inside, then brought it back outside. Was able to turn it upfield for the gain. It's a three-year letterman junior from Waxahachie. Coming into the ball game and picked up 120 yards on the ground. He has been a factor in this ball game today. Second and short. Stockamer. He'll be close. Stacked up by, well, let's start with DeGrade and Moore. And we'll take a look at DeGrade again. He really is properly named. Be great is what it should be. He wants the Baylor men firing out at him. And he's getting double teamed and triple teamed. He still stands his ground. He won't be knocked back, but the Baylor back was able to fall forward for the first down on the play. So first and ten. Cody Carlson running the Baylor offense with Sargent and Stockamer as the split backs and eight as the wideout. Carlson keeps it, and guess who says hello to Cody Carlson? My name is Tony DeGrate. How do you do? I think he wanted to hand the ball off, but failed to reach the handoff man and wisely brought it back in, kept possession himself. No gain, no loss. Second down, 10. Clock running. 10.36 to go in the game. Baylor 14, Texas 10. Matt Clark brings the play in from the sideline. Second down, call for the Bears. Nine seconds to go in the play clock. They're running that play clock down as far as possible. Lead up the time. Carlson under a rush, throws incomplete. Intended for Clark on the slant in. Tony Griffin, number 16. And had the coverage, and here was Mr. DeGrade on the pass rush again. So Tony Griffin coming up with a good coverage there. Freshman out of Crockett and Austin. And DeGrade is consistently in the play almost every time. Third and ten. Clock stopped with 10-14 left to play in the game. Baylor leading it 14-10. to 10. I remind you that in the last five years that the game was played here, the last five times the game was played here, Baylor won four, and Texas had to go to the last minute to win the other one. This time the pass is complete to Conrad. And Bobby Joe to the 10. He's inside the 10-yard line. They may mark it right on the 10. John Hagee making the tackle. A big play for Cody Carlson. 26-yard pass play to Bobby Joe Conrad. And once again, a critical third down pass completion. Carlson, we take a look at Bobby Joe Conrad breaking off to the outside. Gets past his man, breaks it to the outside. The ball comes to him. He looks it right in. He got a step or two on the defender, turns it upfield, and then is nailed, but not until he's moved it inside the 10-yard line or right on the 10-yard line. Bobby Joe Conrad conspicuous by his absence today, but not on that last play as Stockamer takes over on the run to about the 8, where he is brought down by June James. Jerry Gray assisting on the tackle. Uh, Bobby Joe Conrad, we just haven't seen very much of him today until Carlson found him for that big gainer getting the ball to the 10-yard line. He found him at a most critical time. Didn't he, though? That name, of course, a very famous name. His father played for the St. Louis Cardinals. 
One of the all-time great receivers, really, in professional football. Not great speed, but marvelous moves and marvelous hands. Second down coming up for Baylor. They're at the eight-yard line of the Longhorn. Carlson throws back on a screen. It's almost intercepted by Jerry Gray. Had Gray intercepted that ball, he would have had daylight all the way to the end zone. He re refused to go for the fake. It's a rollout pass and a screen pass back away from the play. You can see Carlson rolling out. The Texas rushes on. He throws it back. Uh, there's supposed to be everybody moving with the quarterback, and Gray comes up. He's not fooled at all on the play, and he knows, boy, if I could have just hung on to that ball, we would be ahead. Third down from the eight for a touchdown. The Bears lead it 14 to 10. Nine minutes, nine seconds left to play in the game. Pruitt and Douglas are the wideouts for Baylor. Carlson, the ball batted down. Darnell was in on the rush. James was coming, the linebacker, and it is fourth down. So June James and Ralph Darnell coming up with a fine defensive play. And Marty Jimerson of the field goal unit will come on. Those, there's DeGreat going off. What a game he has played. My goodness. Fourth down from the eight. Kind of a chip shot, really, for Jimerson. 25-yard effort. He has hit 11 out of 13 this year. Clark Hood will be holding. He had four field goals last week against Rice. Let's see if he's got one here. He does. So the field goal adds three more points for the Bears. It is now Baylor 17 and Texas 10 as the Baylor Bears continue to lead the Longhorns. 9.02 left to play in the game and will return to Baylor Stadium in just a moment. I just had to come in here and see for myself. I don't believe he did this. And I thought the big surprise was going to be birthday cake for dessert, not diamonds. Especially not diamonds like these. Oh, they're beautiful. Do I look any different? I feel like everyone was looking at me. And silly me. I didn't think anything could make me feel as good as being married to him. Give her diamonds of quality and see how good she feels. What do you want to be when you grow up? A baseball player. A movie star. At Pilot Life, we know how important dreams are. An astronaut. After all, we've been insuring them for over 80 years. A teacher. With affordable life insurance policies that can guarantee your children's dreams. A doctor. Where are you going to get the money to be a doctor? My daddy. At Pilot Life, we believe nothing should happen to your children's dreams if something should happen to you. You see, we never forget that behind every policy is a person. Jimerson's 25-yard field goal, adding three to the board and a 17-10 lead for Baylor. We have nine minutes and two seconds left to play in the ballgame. And Jim Muller is going to be kicking off for Baylor. Going back deep. We have two men back deep for Texas. Kevin Nelson, Tony Tillman. It's going to be Tillman downing the ball of the end zone. Let's go back and look at a very important factor in field goal kicking. We always think of the kicker. Watch Clark Hood. Well, the snap is so important. It's a three-man play. The center, and this one is low, but what a beautiful job he did with his hands to pick it up. Didn't lose any timing at all. Had it right on the tee. Jimerson's rhythm was not broken. He was able to make the extra point. And so, three on the board, and it's 17 to 10, 9.02 to play in the ballgame. Texas in possession at its own 20-yard line, and Todd Dodge, the junior from Jefferson High School in Port Arthur, where he set the, oh, just unbelievable records, along with his battery mate, Brent Duhon, Texas schoolboy records, now trying to bring the Longhorns back in this ballgame. They're down by seven. Nelson and Marshall are the running backs, along with Simmons, who is in there, and a little razzle-dazzle, and Bill Boy Bryant to do the throwing, and his clock. Great catch by William Harris, the tight end. Getting the ball up to the 37-yard line. Jack Hurd on the tackle. A gain of 17 yards. And a little razzle-dazzle, as you said. Dodge starts out like it's an option play. Then it's a reverse play. He gets it back to Bryant. Bryant is right on target as Williams is on a crossing pattern. Williams is well covered on the play. Bryant did come to Texas as a quarterback, has been converted to wide receiver, but he looked like a great thrower on that one. And William Harris, another good ball game for him. First down and 10 on the 37 of the Longhorns. <laughs> 
Dodge trying to run out of that trouble and then is into the grass with number 76, Greg Baumkamp, who nailed him on the 35-yard line for a yard or so loss. And it's all up to the pass defense of Baylor. Clock showing 8.15 to go in the game. Baylor leading it 17-10. to It'll be second down, 12 for the Texas Longhorns and Todd Dodge, who was shaken up before the first half ended, left the ball game. Danny Akers came on to lead Texas to a drive uh, to field goal range, but the field goal was missed by Jeff Ward, and the halftime came to an end. Dodge stumbling a little bit as he comes out there, throws a screen to Johnson, and the big pullback out across the 45, getting near the midfield stripe. And a first down for the Texas Longhorns. Ray Berry making the tackle along with Thomas Everett, a gain of 14 yards. And the razzle-dazzle plays have been very good for Texas. And Morshell, you know, we every once in a while we take a look at number eight. Rob Morshell is now in the backfield for Texas. Last year, as you know, was a quarterback. This year, he's been a running back. He's been a kick returner. That time, he turned blocker. You really, have, you know, a lot of guys would say, "Wait a minute, I don't want to be, I don't want to be moved out of a quarterback spot." But he came to play. Well, you say it's football's a team game. You contribute to the team any way you can. Dodge throwing, Dodge almost being intercepted by Robert Waters, number 44, the rover back, and William Harris was the intended receiver. Waters has had one interception this year, thought he had another one. Now we have a man down in the field, and that's Derek Turner, number 81, the defensive right in, the junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. And he's a man that Baylor cannot afford to lose. He's a very strong defensive football player. I don't think Dodge saw Waters on that last play at all. Never would have thrown the ball in the line he had had he seen him. So Derek Turner is down, and we will hope that he will be okay. We have a timeout with 7.20 left to play in the game. Baylor is leading Texas 17-10. to 10. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can love your work and leave it to Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. <laughs> that was quite a reunion. Oh, everybody looked pretty good. A few more pounds, maybe. <laughs> the girl in blue was attractive. Uh, the fajitas over here. Who was she? That was Susie. Did you know Susie Art? You want to try one? <laughs> I have a feeling you knew her rather well. <clears throat> about Susie Art. Well, the fajitas here are so great, uh, you can get them either charbroiled beef or... Chicken? <laughs> <laughs> no place else is chilies. No place else. Well, the Texas Longhorns fighting back here in the fourth quarter had the ball at midfield on second down. And Todd Dodge at quarterback. He has now broken Robert Brewer's passing record. We'll tell you about that in a moment. Back to throw again, and this is incomplete to Bill Boy Bryant. Anthony Colvin had the coverage on the play, and he caught that ball. It would have been for about 15 yards. And yeah, Bryant was open, could have made the catch. Looking ahead a little bit, though, if Texas does score a touchdown, do they go for one or do they go for two? That's why I like that college rule. Dodge, 7 out of 18, 83 yards. He needed 63 to pass Robert Brewer's mark of 1,415 yards, which he established in 1982. So Dodge is now the record holder for most passing yards in a season at Texas. Third and 10. Out to Johnson, the fullback, kind of a safety valve. He's at the 45, and it'll be fourth down. It'll be Paul Mergenhagen with help from Jack Hurd to get credit for the tackle on that one, a gain of six. And once again, a great pressure by the Baylor defensive lineman. They just don't give Dodge the time that he would like to have to throw the football. And again, looks like Derek Turner is down again. He gets a rest after this play. <laughs> With 81? Yep. So we have another timeout here for the injury. It'll be fourth down and four for Texas. The ball on the Baylor 45-yard line. 
Texas scored first back in the first quarter, and Baylor went ahead before the half and has led ever since. So we have an official timeout now. Baylor leading 17 to 10. Back after this word from Toyota. Being number one is tough. Staying number one, even tougher. So what would you say about an import that's been number one in car sales 10 straight years? What would you say about an import that's been number one in small truck sales six years? Number one in import car model selection and unsurpassed in truck mechanical reliability. I'd say, save me one. The more you compare, the more you'll see. It's Toyota, not the other guys. You know, when I started dipping Kodiak, made my friend here real happy because it's his brand. Now it's my brand too. It's good and moist with a special cut that packs right and it's got a big fresh winter green flavor. But <laughs> don't take my word for it. Just ask my friend here. <laughs> he really got away with words, don't he? <laughs> to play now with six minutes 58 seconds left of the ball game and Texas in a punting situation with fourth down and four the Baylor 45. Telchuk kicks it downfield into the wind fair catch called for and taken by Everett. So Thomas Everett pulls it in at about the 17 and Baylor will take over after a 28 yard kick 646 left to play and Baylor has the ball in a seven point lead. So it was a very good fair catch Monroe. Texas people all around him, but he kept his eye right on the ball. John Telchuk has had a tough time kicking into that win today. Tom Mickey will come on as a quarterback for Baylor. And if you're a Baylor fan, you're thinking first down, first down, and then one more, and we run out the clock. Leland Douglas is in as one wide receiver, and I believe William Pruitt is going to be the other on this first down. They, uh, it is Pruitt coming to the left side. They bring the plays in. First down and ten. Mickey on a dive to McAdoo, and McAdoo is near the 20, brought down by Tony Edwards, 63, the middle linebacker, and Blake Brauner, number 85, the defensive right end, as we check that Maryland-Virginia game again. Game that's not over. Both teams can score, and Mississippi is really putting it to Mississippi State. That's a final, 24-3. And Clemson holding on to the lead over South Carolina. South Carolina 9-1 going into that game. And Kentucky hanging in there against Tennessee in the second quarter. Matt Clark is down as a wide out for Baylor. Again, the run this time with Broderick Sargent. And Broderick gets to the 21 where Tony DeGreat makes the tackle with Ralph Darnell, 94, helping out. Let's check the scoreboard again quickly. And North Carolina, uh, North Carolina <laughs> leads Duke 7-6. Well, big rivalry. And Duke is hanging in there very tough. Had a lot of injuries early in the year. And Penn State coming back a little bit. Pittsburgh, but looks like they may run out of time. And we've got a big one. I am told this is a big one. Let's see how big it really is. Texas A&M, 6 to nothing over TCU in the first quarter. And Texas Tech ahead of Houston. How about that one? But they're early in those games. Clark and Pruitt are the wideouts for Baylor on third down and six. McKay throwing for the first down. He's got to have it, I believe. It is a first down at the 30-yard line as McAdoo pulled it in as he was popped by Ty Allert. But they got nine yards on the play. And again, Baylor converts on that third down situation. I believe that is seven out of 18 third down conversions. But it's three in a row on the forward pass play when they've had to have it. This one is beautifully executed. Mickey right on target. Receiver didn't have much room, but he had enough to turn to the outside, hit out of bounds, but made the all-important first down. At the 29, first and 10 for Baylor. They have two tight ends in right now with one wide out. They come back with Sargent on a counter to the, about the 32, possibly the 33. Tony DeGreat, 99. The tackler with Ty Allard, 48, helping out. Why don't we just make it a recording that says DeGreat on the tackle? Anytime it's a running play, <laughs> usually you can mention him. What a, but DeGreat right now is doing a bit of hobbling. He looks as though his ankle was twisted momentarily. He has been a tower of strength today. and that Well, he has been all season for that matter. Boy, the pro scouts just drool when they watch him. He's 6'4", 274 pounds. The thing that I admire about him, too, but he has such good lateral speed. He can run, and uh, defensive linemen have got to be able to run. You think normally move sideline to sideline, but running is what it takes to rush the passer. Mm. 
Second down, seven will be the call with five, or rather 459, 457 out clock running. 453, and we're a long way from the real countdown, but right now it's a 17 to 10 Baylor lead. Tight end stay in tight. And Broderick Sargent is really nailed by Chalmer Adams, who just replaced Tony DeGrate. So Tony DeGrate shows in the way. Chalmer Adams, who's from Waco, a junior, comes up to make the hit. Sargent did a very good job of not fumbling that football. He was hit the moment the ball was handled to him. Look at that rushing yardage. Consider last week that Texas had 298 rushing yardage against TCU. Different defensive team. Third down, nine after a loss. And here Look. comes the blitz. And somebody may have jumped offside. We'll see. The flag went down. Ty Allard made the tackle. I believe the Longhorns are going to get nailed for being offside. Looked like McKinney may have started too soon. They had the blitz call. They've been burned three straight times on a third down long. And when you have the blitz call and the quarterback doesn't read a hot receiver, it's going to get to him. So the penalty will be walked off against the Texas Longhorns. Taking the ball up across the 35. Another degrade is now back and going out is Chalmer Adams. He wants to stay in the game. A little sting on my ankle, but I can shake that off in a hurry. Hey, that, that really, you see the leadership in that guy, and, and people respond to that. The defense could get a little tougher now with him back in there. Third down four for the Bears. Bobby Joe Conrad is now in along with Glenn Pruitt. They are the wideouts. Conrad to the near side. Pursuit by McKinney. The pass incomplete to Joel Barrett. Number 88 and Stephen Braggs. Number six, the strong safety had the coverage. And DeGrate was coming after him again. And when you're expecting the blitz, it's a good idea to call the rollout pass. You can run away from the people that are blitzing up the middle. The play was well executed, but also well defended by Texas. Buzzy Sawyer in to do the punting, this time with the wind of his back. He has done, as you see, have seen very well today, 44-yard average, and his season average is 44.2. Gets the kick away and belts it. Marshall lets the ball go back into the end zone, and it'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. A 65-yard kick by Buzzy Sawyer. 3.36 remaining in the game. Baylor leads Texas 17-10. Back after this word from the Jefferson Pilot Corporation. Hi, Mr. Johnson. Little one-on-one? -on -one? Ah, I can't, Jimmy. Your father wants to talk about a pension plan for his company. What's the matter? You over the hill? What sets the Jefferson Standard agent apart from other insurance agents is not just that he sells a wide range of innovative business insurance or that he's specially trained to give comprehensive insurance advice. It's that little extra he gives to his clients. Jefferson Standard. We give a little extra. Did you come here to talk insurance or play basketball? Both. For Tom Casey, whose gasoline chickened out every time he tried to pass. Now, as always, there's the gas with guts with its extra octane to help you accelerate, climb, and pass without laying an egg. For Morton Mitchell, who demands the right gas, but at the right price, Gulf self-service makes more sense for less sense. Gulf, everything we do. Quarter, 336 remaining. Texas possession. 20-yard line. First down. Longhorn. Not dodge it. Quarterback. Dodge staying in the pocket. Throwing it is intercepted by Thomas Everett. Everett at the 40. Everett at the 35. Down to the 25. The 20. He is going to go all the way. Touchdown, Baylor. Brings the crowd alive. A 46 yard touchdown run after the interception by Thomas Everett. They call him the defensive find last year. He's a sophomore from Dangerfield. 
He has 91 tackles going into the ball game. He comes up with a big interception, his first of the year, and a touchdown run, and Baylor leads it 23-10 to with 3.21 to go in the game. And one of the great upsets of the season in the making. It has just been almost impossible for Texas to win here in the last five meetings, and this is number six. The extra point try is good by Jemerson, and Baylor puts another point on the board with 3.21 left to go in the game. It is 24-10. Yeah, we'll take a look at the interception again as Dodge drops back. Has pretty good protection. Wasn't really rushed, but the... Defender is right there, and what a beautiful job of running with the football. And Everett just refuses to go down. Keep my feet. I'll fake that last man. I'll outrun him, and there's the goal line in front of me, and it's a score. And now Baylor leads it by 14, 321 to play. More exciting Southwest Conference football when we return on Raycom Sports. I am the lone piper calling in the clan. I am the words of Jane Austen. I am the proud regiment of the Queen's household cavalry. I am the warmth and smiles of an island people. I am British Caledonian Airways. I am super executive, a special class of service for the business traveler. I will give you the comfort and service you'd expect from the airline that never forgets you have a choice. I am the best of Great Britain. I am British Caledonian Airways. What kind of person buys a Curtis Mathis stereo? The technology is unbelievable. Well, a person who appreciates the quality and engineering of top-of-the-line audio systems. I'll pay by check every month. Or a person who wants easy monthly payments on the only stereo with a four-year warranty. We don't want to buy it. We want to rent it. Or someone who doesn't want to rent just any old stereo, but a new Curtis Mathis. Curtis Mathis stereo components. You won't believe your ears. There's the story of this football game with 3.21 left to play. Baylor leading by 14. Jim Muller will kick off. And right there is the man of the hour, Thomas Everett, who just hauled one back 46 yards after an interception to give Baylor the 14-point lead. So Muller will kick it away for Baylor. The Longhorns have lost once in Southwest Conference play. Looking at a possible second loss here as that kick goes back into the end zone where it is down by Tony Tilden and will be brought to the 20-yard line. And if you think this is a surprising score, we're going to show you another one coming up here in just a moment. How about this one? First quarter, A&M 14, TCU nothing. And Tuck and Houston tied at seven at the end of one. And Houston's going to be looking at that as they look at this score. Stafford's now, coming in at quarterback, excuse me, for Texas. Brett Stafford, a freshman from Belton, Texas. Probably the best pure passer. You see he has hit 7 of 14, 50%. Has not seen much action, but he is the quarterback of the future for Texas at 6'1", 173 pounds. And Texas has turned the ball over four times in this half. Stafford back over the middle, completed to Marshall. And Morshell gets the first down and more out across the 30 to the 36. That is brought down by Kevin Hancock. So Rob Morshell in this ball game today making his presence felt, this time with a 16-yard pickup on the pass play. And no huddle. Brett Stafford, and we've got contact on the line. Was it Chester who moved too early, or did the Baylor defensive left side get a little too anxious? I kind of think Texas moved too soon. So the penalty will be against the Longhorns. A little hard when you are trying to go without a huddle to pick up the normal rhythm. And particularly with the freshman quarterback that you haven't worked with a great deal. Over 33,000 checked in for the ball game today. Ball start by Texas. Longhorns first down, 15. And Pope is now the fullback for Texas. As Stafford rolls and throws and completes to Bryant on the near side at about the 48-yard line. Fine catch by Bill Boy Bryant. 
Well, so that was a good catch. Stafford is running to avoid the expected rush. And while he's on the run, he throws. Bryant comes back a little bit to get the ball, dives for it, and is able to make the reception right on the sidelines. Good for 17. It is first down on the 48-yard line. Now we have 2 minutes, 57 seconds left to play in the game. Baylor ahead by 14. Stafford at quarterback for Texas. Rush is on. Stafford fumbling the football, falling on it. And Henry Green was really applying the pressure. The loss of nine yards on the play, and the clock showing at 2.46, and timeout is called by Texas to stop the clock. So Stafford goes to the sideline. Today's game has been brought to you by Toyota and your local Toyota dealer. By Curtis Mathis, a little more expensive, but worth it. By Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. By Gulf Oil, where at Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. And by British Caledonia Airways, with nonstop service from Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston to London and beyond. Well, we thought we might have a little bit of a clarification on how the Southwest Conference race might uh, end after today's ball games, but I don't think we're going to find out anything. Dodge on the sideline, shaken up a couple of times, but able to come back in the third quarter. Now Stafford at quarterback on a second down and 21. Flags go down on the straight drop. Over the middle, complete to Harris. Harris at midfield, plays a block. Gets to about the 47 and is belted back to midfield. Ronnie Thompson, the cornerback, making the tackle after a 13-yard pickup. But a flag was thrown as that play got underway. Have to be impressed with how well Stafford throws the football in his poise. However, Texas being penalized for a procedure penalty. You know, Bud, one of the things that you always are looking at so closely is time of possession, and look who's had it here in the second half. Yeah, Baylor has been way ahead. They've had it 17 minutes, 24 seconds. Texas has had it only 9 minutes and 15, but when you turn it over four times, that cuts into your time of possession. So illegal motion, the ball back at the 34-yard line, and it becomes second and 26. Clock running, two and a half minutes to go. Baylor, that far away from beating Texas five times in the last six meetings here at Baylor Stadium. Up the middle comes Stafford with nobody to throw to, and Stafford gets crunched, loses the football. Baylor recovers, but the ball may have been blown dead before he coughed it up. Ronnie Thompson on the hit, Hancock up there also, a gain of 14. Stafford has got great speed. He's going to be a great quarterback. And you see him running with the football here, breaking up field. He's hit. He's on the ground. The ball pops loose, but it was called correctly. Third down, 11. Stafford to throw. Stafford trying to find a receiver. Now throws back, and it's an intercepted. Picked up by Jack Hurd, his second interception of the year. And Baylor has the football again on the turnover. The Baylor defensive secondary has really been tough today. Going into the game, if we said if their pass defense could hold up, their running defense would, and they have not held up. They have dominated. So now Baylor has the football with a 14-point lead in a minute and 46 seconds to kill on the clock. And Texas has only two timeouts remaining, so that uh, as far as their chances are concerned, they are gone. So Fred Akers and his Longhorns in deep, deep trouble now. Baylor only has to kill the clock. They go to the run, and Ron Francis, number 11, is now in the ballgame. We had expected to see him. He's been on the injured list. He picks up a game or so, and Ty Allert makes the tackle. We have our Curtis Mathis player of the game. Uh, is a little bit tough to select, so we have picked Johnny Thomas, Thomas Everett, Ray Berry, and Jack Hurd. How about that as our players of the game? And Curtis Mathis will contribute a 19-inch color, full color, uh, feature color television set to Baylor University in the names of Johnny Thomas, Thomas Everett, Ray Berry, and Jack Hurd. And At the end of the season, they will receive a plaque from Curtis Mathis recognizing this honor. And those four interceptions were what gave Baylor the victory. 
Baylor has now had nine interceptions in the last two ball games. And they were a very poor pass defense team in the conference rankings. However, today they have been an excellent pass defense team. It's going to be a bear victory party, and they'll ring that bell tonight, won't they? They've been looking forward to it, and it uh, kind of shows you this narrow difference. This is a Baylor team that could have a much different record. Uh, they've been very close in the games that they've lost, but they're playing one of the great teams in the country today in Texas and have had the game under control. So here come the Bears with a second down and six. And we have movement on the line again. James McKinney came firing across. Was he offside or did uh, somebody move on that Baylor line? Illegal procedure against Baylor. Right now, Baylor is playing its second unit on the line. And uh, that man is going to be... <laughs> he... Yes, he's going to be recognized, that's for sure. We just recognize, <laughs> recognize it, Thomas. Thomas Everett, big pass interception and touchdown run earlier. False start, second down, and 12 coming up. This is the conference standings as of right now, and look what's happening at the top. Texas, TCU, Arkansas, SMU, <laughs> and Houston is not out of it. It ain't over till it's over, huh? That's exactly right. Back to the run. This time it is Todd Connor who's in the ball game. Connor going up to about the 40, brought down by Blake Bronner, and the clock is running with a minute 27 seconds. Right now, the Baylor offensive line has Palmer, Bateman, Elmore, Hur, and Hancock, and Texas calls a timeout to stop the clock. So, Coach Grant Taff has uh, inserted basically his second unit all the way. And Texas has used their last timeout. There's a minute and 26 seconds to go. They may be able to force Baylor to punt the football, but uh, the clock almost run away from them. Well, we showed you the standings a moment ago, and would you believe at this late date, five teams still have a shot at the Cotton Bowl. My goodness. And so was Boston College. <laughs> They're in. <laughs> No Southwest Conference team has ever gone to the Cotton Bowl with two conference losses. But this has been one of those years. And that's the story on the board right now. Baylor 24, Texas 10. Texas led with a minute, six seconds to go in the first quarter by three to nothing on a Jeff Ward 38-yard field goal. In the second quarter, Derek McAdoo caught a 14-yard touchdown pass to put Baylor ahead, and Baylor has led ever since. The quarterback is Tom Mickey. The running backs are Todd Connor and Ron Francis. Francis gets the call. Francis hit behind the line at the 40. Knocked down by June James. Ron Francis, you know, they were talking about a 1,000-yard year for him. As June James stopped him on that tackle. Ron Francis, the sophomore from Lamarck, had a hamstring injury that there he is coming off the field that sidelined him uh, in the middle part of this season. He came into this game with 556 yards rushing. He had three 100-yard games. And so it's been kind of a disappointing year for him because of that hamstring injury. I think it's the most trouble some injury you can have because you just have to let it mend. As we take a look at Texas A&M still leading TCU 14 to nothing in what would be a major upset. And we've got one cooking right here and there could be another one too. Houston, Texas Tech tied in Lubbock at 7. So Baylor leads it 24 to 10 with 44 seconds remaining. And we have just had a penalty walked off against Baylor for delay of the game. It is a fourth down and 12 coming up, but that's kind of academic now as Grant Taff and his staff and this Baylor football team get ready to, to sell. He's had an outstanding day kicking, two kicks over 60 yards, 65 yards even, ready to kick away with the wind of his back. Low snap, and he gets another one out of there. Drives this one downfield. Gets a great roll. Marshall chases it back, and the ball is going all the way in to the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20. So when he has not had the distance in the air, he gets the roll, and that one covered 64 yards. Rob Marshall having no chance on a return on that one. He wants to stay in the ball game. He hits that turf pretty hard. Trying to block somebody to keep them from being able to down the ball before it rolled into the end zone, and Grant Teff's got a happy, happy smile on his face. He deserves it. 33 seconds to go. Baylor, a big upset over Texas, will be the fifth way Baylor win in the last six meetings on this turf, or in this stadium at least. I'm not sure how long the turf has been here. First and ten for the Longhorns at the 20. Brett 
Stafford, the quarterback, trying to run it out of there for anything. Gets pulled down at the 23 by Henry, and the clock at 23 seconds. Irvin Randall, he had a banner over there for him in the band. Irvin Randall for the Heisman. He's had an outstanding year. 18 seconds remaining in the ball game, 24-10, and no timeouts left for Texas as we have an injured Baylor man. And that's an unfortunate uh, time to have the injury because the clock would be very close to running out. And uh, I think that's Coriat that got hurt on the play, a substitute defensive tackle. That injury won't hurt nearly as much with the score what it is. We really appreciate the tremendous work of our Raycom crew and the John Crow group in bringing you the telecast of Southwest Conference football today. They're an outstanding organization, and we have just thoroughly enjoyed being with them. They've given you some great pictures, and they've been in the rain a lot this year, too. Second down. Stafford under a rush. The ball is deflected. His arm is deflected as he got it away. Irvin Randall coming after him. Eight seconds remaining. The clock is stopped. 24-10, Baylor over Texas. Bobby Little has spotted Texas for us today. Jeff Sims, Baylor. Bob Thomas has been our statistician. Our thanks to those gentlemen. Irvin Randall. Maybe he is a legitimate Heisman uh, candidate. Unfortunately, linemen don't get that recognition too often, do they? <laughs> Rarely, if ever. <laughs> I guess Leon Hart was the last one to do so. Offensive line. Last and only one. Stafford cranks it away, and it is almost picked up again. And the clock has run out, and this ball game is over. So the clock expires. The ball game is over. Big upset. Baylor over Texas, 24 to 10. I'm Merle Harbin, along with Bud Wilkinson. Thanks for watching on Raycom, and so long from Baylor. Some of the pro.